Hi, podcast listener. I'm Ray Harrington. So who the hell am I? Uh, that's a great question. I'm, I'm a stand-up comic from New England, and I was just on Conan right before the world stopped. Uh, I also made a documentary that was on Hulu and other streaming platforms around the world, and I'm not on this podcast. But Chuck asked me to tell you about a new web series called Undependent that we worked on together. I'd like to show you a clip, but I, I can't um, because this is a podcast and uh, that's strictly in your ears only. So anyway, it's really funny and I hope you'll watch it uh, for free. It doesn't cost you anything. Um, so uh, again, that's Undependent, like independent with a U maybe a different name would have been a better idea and uh, you can watch the show on youtube by searching the name or at undependentshow.com so thank you for listening to this plug undependent uh now on to the regular undependent podcast undependent i'm comedian writer and filmmaker chuck staten from the punk band senior discount and I'm writer and comedian Brad Rohr from the Providence Improv Guild. And this is the Chuck and Brad Podcast. Hello and welcome to episode 478 of the Chuck and Brad Podcast. I'm Chuck. I'm Brad. How you doing, Brad? I'm all right. How about yourself, Chuck? I am very excited because today we're starting a new mini series on our podcast. Is this the first mini series? Yes, I will just say yes. <laughs> I don't know if we've ever done a mini series. We've certainly never billed it as one. Yes. Uh, so this is the Chuck and Brad podcast that you're listening to. You might be listening for the first time. If so, welcome. Hi. Um, and the mini series, I think we're going to call it a Tesdy Town history or a, the history of Tesdy Town. It's, it's a coin flip at this point. Yeah. Because what we're doing is um, there's a podcast called Tell Em Steve Dave that I've been a fan of for many years. I think the first time I mentioned them on our podcast was in 2012, episode 80. Almost 400 episodes ago. That's right. And, uh, you know, now we've gotten to the point where I work with the guys and I know the guys and I'm comfortable in Jay and Silent Bob's secret stash and I go and I work on all these video projects and I have been consistently for years. I just felt like one thing that they don't do a lot is look back and kind of acknowledge their history because they've been doing things, doing creative projects for ever you know right um and uh there's a lot of people that are involved that are great people and it's weird it's like they just never really talk about anyone's entire backstory so i said i want to do a podcast series where we talk to everybody involved in tell them steve dave and get their entire backstory kind of with a focal point on tell them steve dave yes and for the very first episode today i sat down with walt flanagan and i said i want to know your creative backstory, starting as someone who's kind of not super interested in being a showman, now being like, you know, the head of the Tell Him Steve Dave Patreon project, right. which is this monster, very successful Patreon that Tell Him Steve Dave runs. So we're going to do that. This is the first episode where uh, where we get where we get into this with the guys. And Walt Flanagan is the first guest who is kind enough to sit down with me. And really be open and down to talk about things. And I appreciated it so much. I'm excited to hear what he has to say. Uh, It was so fun. And if this is the first time you're listening to the Chuck and Brad podcast, welcome. Um, You know, I'm Chuck. I do a lot of film work with Tell Him Steve Dave. I've been doing film work with them since 2016 when I directed the Live at the Gramercy Blu-ray. Brad helped shoot that. Remember that, Brad? I do. I do. It was a (laughs) birthday gift you gave me. And then you're like, just kidding. That's no, true. No joy. You have to work this event. I forgot. I gave him a ticket to that show as a birthday gift. And then I like weaseled my way in as someone who was going to film it. And I made Brad also work. That's hilarious. Well, I mean, it was hurtful more so than hilarious. I forgot that. You're going to hear the whole story. I about, wept for days. You're going to hear the whole story about how I got involved um, on this podcast. I talked to Walt about okay. it. So it's great. Um, but yeah, so the Chuck and Brad podcast. Uh, yeah. Since I'm a filmmaker, um, and uh, Brad is an improvisational comedy That's guru. Correct. Are you a guru or yeah, just a performer? You know, you know, at this point, I'm a guru. <laughs> You're I more really, of a performer, though. I really am. Um, I'm, I'm both. Brad's been doing improv for a long time. You know, I've been doing filmmaking stuff for a long time. I make a lot of my own independent films as well as uh, films with Tell Him Steve Dave. I'm in a punk band called Senior Discount. Brad and I do live comedy shows together, the Chuck and Brad comedy shows. We've been doing the podcast for like 
11 years. That's correct. Um, and I write for a bunch of uh, magazines in Rhode Island. So our podcast is kind of about our experiences doing these creative projects, my band, you know, touring up and down the East Coast and playing shows, us doing comedy shows all over the place, all Ugh. over the East Coast, um, these film projects we do, Brad's improv shows. Uh, we talk about all our experiences doing that stuff, as well as the kind of, you know, the mainstream media that we love, like, you know, the Avengers movies and Jurassic World and that kind of stuff. Bands we love, like Brad loves Pearl Jam. I love punk rock because I'm in right. a punk rock band. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, and everything in between, TV shows, video games. So it's a lot of pop culture stuff from the point of view of people who are kind of on the ground floor making stuff. Right. You know, uh, a lot of tell them Steve Dave talk over the years, a lot of talk about well, it became your job. It became my job, exactly. And, and your job is inherently more interesting than mine. So <laughs> That's if right. we're going to focus on one of them. <laughs> yeah, it became a big part of my job, along with a lot of the other stuff that I do. Right. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, as I got closer to the guys and I kind of felt comfortable talking about this, I said, like, can we do this? Can we do these po- these podcasts where I really get into your history and how Tell em Steve Dave came to be, how you got there, how you feel about all these moments in time? And uh, Walt said yes. Brian said yes. Ming and Mike said yes. Get him said yes. Wow. And we uh, got get him. <laughs> and there's only more people on the docket to come. And you know what? If you're a Chuck and Brad podcast listener and you don't really know that much about Tell Him Steve Dave, it's an excellent podcast uh, out of uh, New Jersey. They pr- they record at Jay and Silent Bob Secret Stash in Red Bank, New Jersey. And it's Walt and Brian from Comic Book Men and Brian Quinn from Impractical Jokers. Uh, it started. As the second podcast on Kevin Smith's Smodcast Network, right. you know the guys from Kevin Smith's movies and his stories and his Q&As over the years, and now they built their own podcasting empire. Mike and Ming have their own studio. It's just, it's just crazy over there. Um, and I'm down in New Jersey often in this world of people right. making videos and doing podcasts with the guys in different ways. I'm banned from New Jersey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, were, and you know what? And the relationship between me and Brad is that I might be a little bit more brash and obscene, go with the flow, fun. A little bit? And Brad is a little bit more like uh, Mr. Rogers or yeah. maybe Principal Skinner is kind of how I think about I'm you. somewhere in between. A little bit two. more prim and proper. But we don't want to waste your fucking time right now. You came here to listen to we, Walt yeah, Flanagan. Yeah, we, we don't want to waste your heckin' time. Yeah. Um, and... Uh, Again, uh, yeah, I can't thank Walt enough for doing this. I honestly have never heard him do an interview where I felt like he was this open and honest and someone got this thorough about like the rise of Tell Him Steve Dave and right. the things that happened along the way. So um, that's really fun. And we're going to get right into that. Uh, before we go, let's do some social media plugs. If you want to follow Brad on Twitter and Instagram, it's Brad Rohr, B-R-A-D-R-O-H-R-E-R. That's correct. Wow. Good job. Yeah. And, and if, if you want to follow Chuck, yes. it's at Discount Chuck. That's D I S. <laughs> discount. Discount Chuck. One yeah. word. Yeah. Yeah. I'm at Discount Chuck on Twitter and Instagram. Um, and uh, follow the Chuck and Brad podcast on Facebook. That's where we put all of our updates as well as my social media stuff. And those of you checking out our podcast for the first time and, yeah. and you listen to Chuck talk to Walt and you're yeah. like, oh, are, are there, you know, similarly themed episodes of the Chuck and Brad podcast that sure. I might want to check out? Sure. Uh, we have some in our vast archives yes. that Chuck <laughs> wrote down. And yeah. Yes. So we have a lot of interviews that we've done over the years. We've interviewed a lot of different musicians, comedians, uh, just whoever. And uh, if you want to listen to some episodes that are kind of related to tell them Steve, Dave, that we've done. Go to chuckandbradpodcast.com. Check out episode 359. That's the story of Casey Jost, who has been on Tell Him Steve Dave a couple times now. Yep. And is one of the writers on Impractical Jokers. He's a friend of ours, and he's a great dude. And we did a really, really in-depth uh, interview with him in a hotel in Manhattan at some point. One of in my time. favorites, yeah. That's one of my favorites, too. And then also, we did an episode a while back. Uh, it was episode 366 of our podcast. And it was basically like the behind the scenes of the Tell Him Steve Blu-ray elephants in the room the game show because i had to run this huge um i don't want to call it like a a game i, I was like basically i tried to get people that are telling steve dave fans to make commercials for this I as that. i put the thing together and we talked about the making of that both of those are up are up at uh chuck and brad um but that's pretty much it i don't want to waste any more of your time this is uh the story of Walt Flanagan. And man, I can't thank Walt enough for doing this. He's a great dude. He's a smart guy. And I appreciate uh, how involved he's let me become. Check it out. All right. I'm here in Jane Silent Bob's secret stash in Red Bank, New Jersey uh, with Walt Flanagan. 
How you doing, Walt? Hey, what's up, Chuck? <laughs> Not too much. I've been wanting to do this interview for a long time. I think the first time that we really filmed together was uh, for Scream Baron Scream, which was for... Was it for the Gramercy Blu-ray? It was for the Elephants in the Room. Elephants in the Room. It was one of the trailers for Elephants in the Room. That's right. Yeah, we started... Uh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Elephants in the Room. Because we filmed Gramercy and like I really didn't know you guys at all. I didn't even know that you... <laughs> That anybody filmed it, to be honest with you. The Gramercy was what year? 2016. 2016. Yeah. Uh, Q's manager, manager yeah. whose name re- uh, escapes me right now. It's uh, uh, Dexter. Dexter, yes. Yes. Um, yeah. He, I guess he hired um, some people to film, which would be you. Yeah. And after that night uh, i i don't think i've ever spoken to dexter since that night since that uh i I had no contact with him uh i have i had no knowledge of anybody filming it or if there was somebody filming it i i mean right it it was done in an era where um filming and video uh taping tell him steve dave was yeah was not a thing yeah exactly exactly that's the whole reason i wanted to film it it was actually it was actually the second live show you guys did that summer. I don't know if you remember. You did a show at the Bell House. Yes. With yeah. Get em. Mm-hmm. I was at that show. Were you? And I, I yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll get to this point in time, but I reached out to you to see if I could film that show. And you were like, you wrote, wrote me back. Did I, wrote, did I write you back? Yep. You wrote something like, oh, that's very kind of you. Uh, and that's it. And I, I, I was like, you know, I was telling Gina this at the time because we both went. I was like, you know, these guys do this podcast. They probably have people talking to them all the time that say, hey, I want to do this. I want to do this for you guys. And probably 90% of them don't come through. You know, they probably don't, they don't know, you don't, you know, to trust me that I'm going to do something good. You don't know what I'm going to do. You have no idea who I am. So I was like, I knew that. And I I reached out to you for the Gramercy one too. And you basically said the same thing. Um, (laughs) It was just fine. And I I found Brian's email address. I wrote him. No one got back to me. And I was like, ah, I'll write to, uh, you know, Dexter just in case. Uh, How did you get his email? (laughs) So it's funny because like from being in the band and doing, you know, journalism stuff that I've done, I just have to be able to be like good at like hunting down people's information, like Googling stuff. But honestly, I think I was like looking for stuff about Tom Steve Dave, followed the Quinn links, whatever he had up, went to the Impractical Jokers website. And I think at the time they had some contact information. And one of them was like, maybe it was like booking or something. And it was Dexter's email. And that's so weird. It was a long know, time ago. Though. It was a long time ago. And it, it, it's so weird. And I, and I remember how... I found out like it was like oh how long ago how many years later was it that like the footage resurfaced though <laughs> it's crazy it's a crazy it's funny because I want to I want I want this to be about you but I'll tell you this it's crazy here's what happened so I guess yeah we'll open with the story that makes sense all right so I reached out to Dexter and, and during this time I was out of my house from the house fire so I'd lost a bunch of my equipment in the house fire so he was like. Uh, He wrote back, he said something like, what kind of equipment do you have? And uh, how much would you need? And all this stuff. And we didn't get the guarantee like, like, okay, we want to hire you guys come out until about 48 hours before we left. But I didn't have enough equipment. So the day before we came to film Gramercy, I had to go to Best Buy and I had to buy like $2,000 worth of equipment with the plan of just returning it as soon as I finished the filming, the shoot. (laughs) So, and also... So Gina was my my camera B person and my buddy Brad, who I do this podcast with, my camera C person. And at the time, neither of them had any experience filming. So I had to have like a crash course the night before of what to do and like how to frame things. And I contacted them through like 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 Facebook Messenger the whole time. And they were showing me their angles and we were adjusting according to each other. But so we only had like 48 hours to go down. And yeah, that's I mean, that's how our relationship started was was me reaching out and talking to Dexter. And so I came to the show. I had never met. I didn't meet you or Brian or Quinn at all ever in my life before that. Um, did we meet that night? And so basically you guys did the first show and Sal was the opener. I filmed yeah. Sal too. Dexter asked me to film Sal too. Then in between shows, you were downstairs and I was downstairs too because that's what they told me to go with my equipment. And I went up to you and this wasn't the first time we talked. I'll talk about that in a minute. But th- this is this is the first time we really talked about work together at, at any capacity. And I said like, hey, what are we filming this for? Like, I, you know, I'm, I'm part of the film crew, whatever. And you were like, I don't know. This is Q's deal. That's what you said. 
So I was like, okay, which makes sense, right? right yeah, I, I had no knowledge that there was even a film crew. Right. So, so I was like, okay. So I filmed, I filmed the second show. I filmed Sal's second set. And we went home the next day and I started like fixing the, you know, fixing the footage, like color correction and syncing. And Dexter had said like, oh, Declan is going to mix the audio. I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, I, I knew Declan from the show. It made sense. And like nine months went by. It was literally like nine months. And I was like, I wonder what they want to do with this. And so the did you f- send the audio to uh, Declan? De- they, whoever, I don't know who recorded the audio. I think Dexter did it, but he must have sent it oh, to them. Oh, okay. So I was like, so I didn't really, you know, I, I didn't really have any specific point of contact besides Dexter. So what happened was, you might remember this, maybe you won't. Oh, I remember it. So basically we did, uh, you know, on my podcast, we had my old friend, Eric Maxud, and we had this hypothetical joke we always uh, made with him when he was on the show about how he had this older, like, racist like, uh, you know, slutty grandmother named Noni Maxud. And we were doing a live show and I was doing a prank on him where I made funeral invitations Mm -hmm. for his grandmother, this fake grandmother we made up. And I was sending them across the country to people with these funny messages on them and getting people's responses and stuff like that. And so I sent one to the stash and I was like, hey, Walt, this is Chuck. I filmed the Gramercy thing. This is a prank on my friend. I explained it. I go, I still have that footage. Whenever you want to, you know, want me to do something with it, I'm here, I'm ready to go. And that's what prompted you to contact me for the first time. Yeah. I put my email address on there. Yeah, I, I remember I remember looking at, I thought it was a real, it was a real, it was, it a, was real a real fun, invitation. A real funeral invitation. And it, it's crazy how close <laughs> I came to just throwing it away immediately. Yeah, yeah. Because I was like, what, what is this bullshit? Yeah. And, I, and, I, and I was going to throw it away. I don't even know what prompted me to read even further than the yeah. first thing. Because I'm like, why would some, why would someone send this here? Yeah. Like my, and it, probably I was annoyed at something and I, I didn't even give it, almost didn't even give it a, more than a glance. Yeah. But something made me read further and then I and it said that, you know, you had filmed the Gramercy show. Yeah. And I was like oh, and how many that was like almost a year later, right? Yeah. So that so we filmed the Gramercy show in July and then I think I sent this to you in, in like May of the following year, 2017 in May. Um, yeah, I think you wrote me and you said like, I thought this was like an impractical Jokers fan sending it to Quinn, trying to get Quinn to actually come to his yeah. grandmother's funeral. <laughs> so yeah, so that's when we started talking. And then um, I think you were like, let me talk to Declan. And Declan's like, oh yeah, I'll get on that audio. And then it kind of just set the ball in motion. And we did the, bl- the first Blu-ray, which yes. is great live at the Gramercy. Um, but yeah, it was, yeah, it was like nine months because there was really no plan. And it was just, um, it was almost like, I mean, even the way I pitched it to Dexter, I was like, there's so few Tell Him Steve Dave live shows. It doesn't make sense not to film it. Is kind of more than what I thought. Like you should just have it for even even if you don't release it for right. a couple of years. Who cares? You know. But what I mean? that one was easily our most visually. Yeah. The uh, blood. Yeah. You know, we had the spit in the blood in the beginning. Yeah. You know, there was the Domino's costume that Bri <laughs> wore. Yeah, yeah. So and then there was eventually like eight people on stage. Yeah. So I I when I realized that someone had that footage, I was like we could do something with that yeah. because it's so rare for uh, for anybody to see any of this stuff I know. unless you were there in person. Yeah. So that's really what prompted me to uh, reach out to you and see if we can get the ball rolling on getting that, getting that footage up to snuff to be released in some way, some capacity. I didn't know how. I yeah. mean, uh, we didn't have a, I don't even know if we had a website at that point. Yeah. I, I honestly, I, I don't even remember, but I remember that it was like, what are we going to do with this? And we talked about a Blu-ray mm-hmm. and then it was like, yeah, let's just put the whole entirety of both shows. And it was funny because see this, this is, this. so maybe, maybe we'll go back and we'll get to this point because I kind of want to talk about you and your journey from being, you know, from just kind of growing up and having, you know, whatever aspirations you had then and now becoming part of this very specific like world of entertainment through tell him steve dave that has become so expansive it has so, expanded like crazy in the past <laughs> nine years and it's funny because i was even you know we've been filming stuff and i was even thinking about it. i'm like man if comic book men filmed in late 2011 tell him steve dave didn't start till early 2011 that's crazy i thought yeah well no i thought we started in 2010 i thought or unless two, that's the error. Two thousand. Oh yeah, maybe it is two thousand February two thousand ten. Maybe yeah. that's what it is. So there's like a yeah. year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe that's right. But yeah, I wanted to talk to you about it because I think it's a real. 
you know, a really interesting thing that has changed. And one thing that I noticed about you guys over the years is that you don't ever really like look back or talk about how something came to be or talk about the evolution of something. And I know you personally, because we've talked a million, there's a million texts and emails between me and you. And whenever I get like a little sentimental and I'm like, oh, this is, you're like, yeah. Anyway, the next video, <laughs> <laughs> you jump on it immediately. Yeah, I'm not one to like uh, wax poetic about, because you know, especially since lately, because it's like, it's on to the next thing. Yeah. Oh, we're, yeah. We're putting, you know, I know, uh, it, yeah. I know it's, um, it's crazy that people are like, well, you're putting out one thing a week. Well, like that's, uh, that's what a harsh schedule that is one thing a week. But like th- those one thing a weeks are, are hard to get out than you, than people would think. It's like oh, there's yeah. a lot that goes into it and there's a lot of time and thought. Oh, hell yeah. And, um, something comes out that's really, really good. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you, but all people remember is like, well, what's up next? Oh, what's up okay. next? What comes out next week? Not, not only that, it's like, you know, since, since we're filming all the time, it's, it's not even really just one thing per week because you guys are doing the Patreon merch stuff. Yeah. You guys are, you know, having like, you have social media, obviously, that's pushing this stuff. You have someone who's running the Patreon. You have Declan having to mix all the audio. You have multiple video people. You have all these different people that are kind of doing different parts. I mean, even just the preparation of filming that one thing per week is a lot of work. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, and that's on top of the normal Tell em Steve Dave stuff and which on top is, of which running is, the store. Yeah, but well, that has become the easiest of the uh, – <laughs> yeah, yeah. just, we just sit down with yeah. no cameras, yeah. no nothing. It's just a, the, just like I know. it was in the beginning, just three mics yeah. and just – no real plan, just just roll with it. Yeah, right, right. And so it's the least amount of thought beforehand. Yeah, yeah. Right. It, it actually has, has become the least amount of um, homework. Right. Um, to do a regular tell them Steve Dave than it is to do the other stuff. Wait, I'm not complaining about it because it, it's I enjoy it and it's fun as hell to do all that other stuff. But yeah, the workload. There's, there's a yeah, there's a certain amount of yeah of um, homework that has to go into it and prep. And gathering the things you'll need, yeah. costumes, all the other nonsense. But Frank Five driving down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's, a, there's a lot of moving yeah. parts on it to do, just to put out one thing a week. And oh, we, we, yeah. I mean, it, initially when we started the Patreon, it was just all audio. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it's just evolved into something that's a bit more visual now than than it has ever been yeah but when you do visual though yeah to do it right and to do it with the, the in a way that is interesting all the time and new it, and different and something that you could look back on and be like oh i'm proud of that release right i know i i, I do have a certain amount of uh, pride in the uh, some of the things that we've released not everything <laughs> some things just don't work out <laughs> yeah. you know but um for the most part though 99% of the Patreon stuff, um, I when I look back at it and look at it, I'm like, damn, yeah. I'm really impressed with with how well some of the things came out. And that, I mean, and that is in definitely uh, your involvement, Victor's involvement, but like something like the Making Hay documentaries. Yeah. You turned that footage that Q found on his uh, camcorder <laughs> into something that I just adore. I adore it. I think it's awesome. I'm surprised it didn't get as much uh, feedback on it as it, because I thought it was fucking awesome. Yeah, I appreciate that. I thought it was like one of the best things we've ever released. And because it's, it's almost like archival fucking footage. Exactly. That's how I, when, when, when we were like, because I remember, you know, the Patreon schedule has been like, kind of like, oh, we'll do a couple of these things. And now it's a little bit more structured where it's like, let's do a couple Frank Fives and we'll do a Sunday Jeff show. We'll do this. But back then it was a little bit more like, what should we do next? What, what are we going to do next? And when, when you were like, oh, we have the footage from Making Hay 1 and 2. Let's just make documentaries about them. It was a really tall order because yeah. no, no footage existed really. That was actually of you guys podcasting, which is the majority of it. But I was like... I, I knew as soon as I listened to uh, like listen to the footage and like I watched the footage and listened to the show, I was like, I was like, I gotta make this my my goal. I told Gina, I was like, I gotta make this feel like an HBO documentary. That's what I want this to yeah. feel like. 
and uh, I'm lucky that people filmed these random episodes in the store on YouTube <laughs> and put those clips up, and then we used a bunch of pictures we had, and yeah, I, I, I appreciate it. I really, yeah, I, I can't say enough about that one. Was like that one just makes made me smile from ear to ear because it's like that's the equivalent that footage is the equivalent of like finding like a, a fucking caveman that's in a how glacier. I feel. Yes, because that stuff like. The, no one even knew it existed. Yeah, no I know. one knew it existed, and Q just had it, and yeah, we, and he had it for a while. Yeah, and he he gave it to me, and I was like, "What are we going to do with it? Well, let's do something spectacular with it." Well, like we had all these crazy plans that we were going to do with it that I don't even think I ever spoke to you about. Like we were going to do making Hay three, mm -hmm. and film it all, and then have and then put this on at the end of it as like a like over a montage of like music oh, yeah. right, and everything, right. but. It, but it didn't look like making Hate Three would ever happen, though. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It didn't look like like it's we had tough. talked about making Hate Three for so long and we, with Q's schedule. It just yeah. To me, it felt like it ain't happening. Yeah. Why? And we have this Patreon now. We need content. Mm -hmm. Let's utilize this That's making nice. Hay footage, and especially um, since we did making Hate Three. Yeah. Um, and we're able to do it. And with we're that. able to do it with that. It yeah. was yeah. It's one of the it's one of the, the ones the projects that I'm extremely extremely proud of i i, I love it i yeah. love it and uh, amongst a, a lot of the other stuff that you worked on yeah i, I appreciate it man everyone's you know we're all I, I think like i think i wrote to you like a little bit after the patreon started and i'm like we're all a team in this i feel like we're basically making our own like saturday night live where it's like every week we got to do a new thing well yeah to me it's more it's not like i, I would never <laughs> Ever compare it to Saturday Night Live? I think yeah, that's that's ridiculous. I compare it to a cable access channel. Yes, yeah, from totally, the eighties. Totally. I remember having a. I remember having access to a, a cable access channel when I was growing up. Yeah, and the amateurish shit yeah. that would come on there, but it was fun to watch. Though yeah. it felt like it was like uh, you know like. I shouldn't be watching like pirate TV or something yes. like no one's no rules. They're yeah. just doing whatever they want. Yeah. Like the uncle Floyd show was, was something that it was on here. There was a, there was a comic book review show that I would watch on cable access. No budgets, no, nothing to ever that anybody would ever remember fondly. But yeah, that vibe though was um, how I wanted the, uh, is it Tom Steve Day patron to feel like that yeah. kind of like, Variety, tell it like the TSD TV. Yeah, exactly. Like that. Yeah, the yeah, that, yeah, that project that we did. Like yeah. that would come to life with the advent of us doing this. To absolutely, I, I agree. I agree a hundred percent. But it, yeah, it is everybody working together because there's so many different parts to yeah. this and personalities and people behind the scenes that are, you know, they. The, uh, you yeah, know, I see. Uh, there's this power rankings. It's like just for fun that people release on the Reddit, and I'm like, mm -hmm. man, Declan should be on this every every month. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's it's awesome. Yeah, so uh, the, what I wanted to talk to you about was kind of, you know, your journey because you're kind of an unassuming guy, and it's interesting to see where you are now that you're in charge of so many creative projects where you just got to come up with stuff. You must. I, I was thinking about this. I was like, you must be reviewing stuff or working on stuff like every day, right? Almost every day. It has yeah, to be almost every day. There's something to um, look at a cut. Yeah. Look at a rough cut and see if there's anything I want to change or add or any or any ideas that I can like bounce off you or Victor and be like, you know what I like? Don't think it'd be fun here. Yeah, throw this in. For the most part, though, lately though, I haven't had to do that with any of your stuff. Your stuff's like really been on fucking on point, and it's been there's been nothing to uh, to <laughs> add to it. It's been so fucking top notch. Um, but like, like even bouncing off ideas, I'm sure with Getem during the day to say like, what should we do next? Yeah, like yeah, we did something recently. Like we did a. Um, uh, a take on uh, Press Your Luck game show. Yeah, yeah. And it it, it it originally was going to be something totally different and yeah. just but bullshit and would get them. Yeah. And it had morphed into something else, you know, and, and Victor had that one. He did an awesome job on that. It was yeah. too, uh, I mean, everybody, yeah. everybody's come to, like, I, I can't say enough about the uh, people who are involved with it from people in, that are filming it and cutting it to the people who are on the actual podcast. Um, yeah. It, it, it's it's been fun but it's also been a lot of work too it's a crazy amount of work and yeah. this is this is it's crazy you it's see my and then that's just the fucking content yeah. you see my fucking garage <laughs> You should see my garage. It's, it's, it's just full of it fucking merchandise for the tears that get gifts. I know. It is absolutely fucking taking over my life and my wife's <laughs> life. And she's just like, 
We have to get a storage unit. There is, there are windbreakers. There are baseball caps. There are um, koozies everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Like every, there is no room. Like we can barely fit the car in now. There's just enough room to fit the car in. It's like the Goldbergs. I don't know if you saw that episode where they just carved out all the boxes of shit that they had where they could fit the car in and nothing else. Yeah. That has come to fruition at my house. See, this this is what's so crazy. So, so I want to go back a little bit and- it's funny because I, you know, everybody knows that you're an artist and that was your initial like interest in, you know, entertaining people and bringing kind of your creativity to the table, right? That's where it started. Is that, is that where it started? What do you think? Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't, it, it is so strange and foreign for, I mean, I, I know people will say this like, oh, you know, I am definitely not trying to be modest or anything, but I've never ever consider myself an, an entertainer ever and I, I i will go to my grave <laughs> trying to keep that mindset because i am not an entertainer it's, i am not i i i don't under i don't understand how that hap if that happened or if other perception is, is of that from other people i don't know when that happened though because uh, basically that, i'm that's, just that's what's a conundrum to me but because it certainly has happened you have one of the most popular podcasts on patreon you yeah. have tons of people like we, we're sitting in front of a glass case of people who made pictures and paintings yeah, yeah. And, and statues of of stuff that you came up with with quotes that you said on it and that's what's why that that's what's so crazy to me is, is, you know, that starts by accident. That's the weirdest thing is telling yeah. Steve Dave is kind of an accident. Yeah, it definitely, it definitely started. Well, I mean, if you like, as you said, go like comic books, even like that, like I, 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 I hate to have anybody say, oh, you're an artist or whatever. Like I do art, I draw, but like the guys who I call artists I am not like you know. It's just that weird thing. I guess it's just that. Um, I, th I think a lot of people have that. I yeah. think it's just a normal thing. Even for even for people who are like on SNL now, they're just like, oh, they have that kind of imposter syndrome. And I think it's in a lot of people. Yeah, who are, who, yeah. I think that's. A, I've never heard that before. Imposter syndrome. Yeah. But like I do have yeah. that feeling of like, especially when it comes to art, because um, I know how far I I would like to to get to to get to a point like you know where i'm happy with what i draw or what i put out there uh, i i have fun doing it but i would never uh you know and people like will email me and be like well like i'm, I'm trying to do this i'm trying to do that what what um, pointers can you give me? I'm like, I am not the person that you should be asking pointers for on, on art i go i am just like if I do anything that I'm even halfway happy with, uh, I consider that a success. But for the most part, though, yeah, like, man, it's very uh, tough for me to to consider myself an artist. Uh, I've always loved all your stuff. I had I had a ton of stuff before the fire. I still have all the all the cacophonies, but I don't I don't have some of the other stuff I used to have. But man, I've always loved your stuff, and I've loved even sometimes people will put up the custom stuff that you've done uh -huh. in tides of pages. I love that stuff. That's like my favorite oh, stuff. Thank you. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just so interesting because, you know, you were going down that path and obviously, you know, Kevin starts making movies and you're part of clerks in all these different ways and mall rats continues. I mean, you know, I'm skipping over stuff because everyone knows this story right. and you're part of all these different things. And so at the so let, let's I mean let's go back to to clerks I mean you're in clerks were you doing anything so were were you you must have been drawing at that time right uh poorly very <laughs> poorly very amateurishly um uh, certainly not uh, anywhere near the level to be published uh it was just it was just bad yeah uh, I have some of the drawings I I have from that era and they're 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 in an abomination they're an embarrassment <laughs> but I, I like but the thing you know everybody knows the story i'm like i'm, I'm not an actor he right. just was doing he was filming that stuff and so, so you weren't interested really in being like no. oh, i want to be part of a creative project nope. at all no i would you just like oh, i would just go to, to watch help. i would go to watch and check it out because yeah. you know nobody i had known had ever attempted to make a movie yeah and you know he's doing this and he's got a crew he's got yeah. uh equipment mm -hmm. And I would go down there, you know, I wouldn't even go down there when they first started filming. Like they would start at like uh, at 10 o'clock or mm -hmm. nine o'clock at night. And I would wait till like almost 11 or 12 because I would be out with uh, my girlfriend. Yeah. Who was, you know, who is now my wife. But like, 
I would just wait till I was done with whatever we were doing. And yeah. then I would just show up at like 12 o'clock at night, one o'clock in the morning. Cause I knew they were going to be there all night yeah. and I would just see how things were going yeah. and no. And sometimes people would just not show up and they'd be like, I don't think this person's showing. You want to jump in there and do this. Right. And the feeling being like, well, I, I just was in something a couple nights ago. Yeah. And, you know, it's going to look ridiculous if I'm in every episode and he was, I mean, every scene. Yeah. And he was like, ah, you put a hat on, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> people won't even realize it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so, so you didn't really have any interest in no. pursuing something creative. No. And if you look like I'm involved, my involvement in everything uh, starts to wane in, in his movies as, as the movies go, <laughs> go on because, you know, I'm in Mall Rats real quick. Yeah. I'm in, I'm in Chasing Amy in a cut scene. In a cut scene in the comic book um, store, yeah. I'm in Dogma in a second because at the, uh, at the abortion clinic. Yeah. You because Brian. as Kevin's climbing the ladder, he's getting real deal actors. He doesn't need to <laughs> put this fucking amateur in there, you know, his yeah, friend. Yeah, yeah. And he buys the store. Yeah. And then that's my gig. Yeah. It's not like, I don't, I'm not on set anymore. I'm not right. around. He's out in California yeah, making this, movies. This is your I'm responsibility. Here. Yeah. And, and I'm not involved in any uh, aspect any longer right. uh, in films or right. cameos. And, right, you know, right. real quick one, maybe in Clerks too. Yeah. Real quick, but. Yeah. And then strike back at the, at the very end, you know, there's, a, yeah. we walk out. Yeah, Certainly not like roles. They're not right. roles. They're just like little quick Easter eggs for people yes. who are paying attention. Yeah. And that's the way I wanted it because I was like, I'm not, I don't want to do all that stuff. I don't want to be on, especially when you're making it in such, in front of such a large amount of people. Right. Clerks is made in front of three people. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah, the set of James yeah. and Bob Strike Back is a different world. Yeah. There's like, there's a thousand people on set and I have to yeah. act like a, I have to do something that I feel self conscious doing. You know, not that that, but you know, anything that I yeah. would feel self conscious doing. Right. Performing in general. Yeah. So it's so so you have no interest in that. So it's funny because like let's let's just say that takes us up to like you know around like the two the early two thousands, um, and you do you do Carney. Oh, that yeah, two thousand six, two thousand six, two thousand seven is Carney. Yeah, that yeah. was something that uh, um, I finally just uh, made the decision I would. Um, Finish something. Yeah, yeah. I would be like, I had drawn so many things, and I remember my wife saying, uh, "Like you start all these comics you're going to do, and you never finish them." Yeah, and she was right. She's like, you know, you never finish them. And I was like, I'm going to finish this one. I'm going to do this <laughs> this book about this freak show that Brian wrote a movie script for. Yeah, yeah. And I'm going to finish it, and I'm going to see it to the end. Yeah. And I did. I, I actually did, and I was, and that was almost enough for me. And then we submitted it to IDW, uh, Chris Rael, a guy that yeah. uh, we that Brian kind of knew. I really didn't know him, so we kind of had it in, mm -hmm. and he accepted it and he published it. Yeah, and then we did a follow up called War of the Undead with Rael. Yep, and IDW, and yep. that was super fun. Yeah, and then that got me the. Um, I don't want to say cred. It's certainly not cred, <laughs> but I guess it got Kevin. It put a, a bug in Kev's ear that, like, well, he finished these two books. Yeah, I want to do a Batman book with, him, and I'm going to have a see if DC will let me draw it. And the suit, two, the first two are like super fun. Yeah, Cacophony and no, no I mean like oh. uh, Carney and War of the Undead. Oh, okay, they're just yeah. like they're so yeah, fun. They're out there. Yeah, yeah, they're they're they yeah, exactly. They're yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they were they were very very fun to do. Yeah, and as. The Batman projects were fun to do too, but way more intimidating because yeah, yeah. I had editors mm -hmm. approving everything that I did. Yeah. So there was so much like stress and like, I'm not good enough. I can't do this. Um, they're going to, they're going to fire me. Um, I'm not fast enough. That's an also thing. I'm oh, not yeah. fast enough to do it as well. But the books came out. They were lifelong dreams to be able to draw some of the characters I got to draw. Yeah. And around that time after finishing Gyre is when um, Tell Him Steve Dave started up. Yeah. So, so this is what's interesting. So my perception, because I'm, I'm kind of like, before I get involved with Gramercy, I'm like the average person who's on the outside of this world seeing it happen. Because I was born in 84. Mm -hmm. So Clerks came out when I was 10. So I was a little bit young for Clerks. But like by the time Chasing Amy was on like VHS, I became, I started consuming like View Askew stuff. And you hear things in the movies like, 
you know, uh, he, that, you know, LaFour is in uh, Mallrats. He's faster than Walt Flanagan's dog. And so, you know, the, we're in the infancy of the internet and like 98, 99, I'm like, Walt Flanagan's dog. And it's sticking in your head because you're like, is this a reference I don't get? Is this a movie I don't get? And so I look it up. I, re- I remember I look it up and I find out about about you and Brian and different people, Ernie, different people that are kind of around the area that are involved in the movies that are friends with Kevin. And so as I'm a fan of Kevin's movies, I find out about you guys. And then as time goes on, DVDs start coming out and you guys pop up in the making of stuff and the documentary stuff and the cut scenes and, and different things like that. And so I get introduced to Brian and you and Ernie and, uh, Vinny Pereira and different people that I just kind of see here and there. So that's that's my kind of like side of this as I'm growing up. And also Kevin's writing like stories and stuff. And so those stories include you guys as like, and he's doing the Q&A stuff. And it's like, you know, uh, Randall's based on Brian and Brody's based on Walt and all these different yeah. things. So you, you start, you know, getting more familiar with you guys as people, weirdly enough, even though you're not really doing anything specific in to like further that you're just kind of like people like know who Walt Flanagan is, who Brian Johnson is. It just becomes this weird thing. And so then I remember when Smodcast started, you guys would guest on it here and there. Mm -hmm. Like I remember there's a couple, you know, you did the pillow babies thing and all that stuff. And now you wanted your clone to be your best friend. Yeah. And I was like, Oh, like, like, like a lot of other people, I guess I was like, Holy shit. Like that was, it was so funny. It was so funny. And I remember it was for me. It was a little bit later. It must have been maybe late 2011 is when I got into Tell Him Steve Dave, and it was pretty close to when it started. You know, maybe like a little bit, like a little bit behind, like a year and a half. But I remember listening to the first episode, and I remember you being so disinterested, and you were like, "You're like, yeah, you're like you're like Brian wanted to start a podcast, so I said, okay, I'll do that, and like and like that's it." You were like, I guess we'll just start a podcast just because whatever. And you expected it to go for two episodes or whatever. And I'm listening as the podcast is starting. And, you know, you're being yourself back then, like like very much so, I think, probably less guarded because you're like, I don't even know who's going to listen to this. Right. Remember all the stuff, the gizmos and gadget stuff that oh, you, yeah. <laughs> you got a lot of backlash. Oh, yeah. for. So I'm listening to this stuff and I'm hearing you as this essentially like an unwilling participant towards the beginning of Tell Him Steve Dave in the first couple episodes. Yeah, because I mean, uh, this was this was not my thing. I was just involved. Exactly. I, was, I was just going to uh, be a part of it. Exactly. And and Brian was going to lead the show. Brian, yeah, you know, and it was not something that I would have to put any real effort into or thought into. I would just right. be show up and mm-hmm. talk about whatever Q, you know, Q obviously didn't start. Yeah, he was, show barely, as, he was barely as on a, the show. As a, as a, as a, as a, as part of the cast. Yeah. And he just grew into it and, <laughs> it just, it really, I think things, things change and I don't know if it's crazy, but like you mentioned the, uh, the, uh, the gizmos and gadgets and some of the feedback, like, yeah, yeah. I like, I fucking just, I, I, I just altered my whole way of, um, Expressing. Pre- presenting myself to people based upon those initial responses to me of like, oh, they don't like that. Yeah. Okay. Then I'll just become this. Yeah. Kind of quote unquote character uh, on on the mic then, and it turned around then because and, and people st- and, and some people get it. Yeah. And it's like the the, the people who are around for a long time they get it. They yeah. and, and other people don't get it. And they're like and other and you see online people argue like how the fuck do you not know he is fucking with you? And it, 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 that's it, it's just the way, the way it it just evolved that yeah. like and. And it really wasn't until Sandy, yeah, that I was like, "I'm going to try at this. I'm going to I'm going to give more effort to it." Really? Why was that like a turning point? Because um, I saw the oh the outpouring. outpouring. I wow. saw the um, the unbelievable amount of. Um, People being like, like, because we put out a Christmas episode right after that. Yeah. And the amount of people that came forward and bought it and just- um, And cared. And cared and just were like, it made made me realize I was just like, well, I I should probably give more effort to this. 
because I, they uh, people deserve a more of an effort than I'm giving. I think than I than I was before. I and I know that's crass to be like, well, it took, you know, but it really just made me go like, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and I'm gonna I'm gonna really put like thought into this and I'm gonna put I'm going to come up with things and I'm yeah. going to uh, all because um, I felt I owed it. After the response, it was a feeling of like, well, it's, I'm obli- I feel obligated now because people came through for us. Uh, I'm going to, the only way I can repay them yeah. is to give an, uh, a, an effort. It's, it's, it, that's really interesting to hear because like I, I recognize the fact that in the beginning you're kind of like, yeah, I guess I'll do this. It's not going to last for long. And then now it's completely different. It's a completely different world for Tell Him Steve, Dave. And it's interesting to find like a point in time that you see. Where oh, that yeah. I, too. That's, that's the point where like everything, uh, yeah. I, I put in way more effort solely because I felt like I couldn't, I could not not give them a, a bigger effort yeah. uh, because of, you know, how people came through for us with that with that christmas pod wow that's crazy that's that's crazy it's funny because i i kind of find you to be someone who's like you have like a a creative instinct because even that early stuff where it's like how can kids like you know save money in college gizmos gizmos and gadgets like you kind of taking the time even to write that list in the beginning to me is an indicator of that and then making hay is like really early on and tell him steve dave it's like episode 12 or something like that and that's a pretty big undertaking Making hay, making hay is episode twelve. Of right, Tell but it, it, yeah, that is n- that. That took a walk in the park to what we do now. Oh yeah, compared yeah, to what yeah, you're doing yeah, now. Yeah, because but even, it, even then, the idea of just doing that for fun it's a pretty big task. Do you know what yeah, I mean? You know, yeah. in terms of like having, you know, not being not putting in a ton of effort. That is a lot of effort. That was yeah. That was but you know that was one of the ones that like you know before, when we started it, I was like, you know, what we should do because yeah. we should go there and do that. But like, yeah. That was Brian's effort, though, because yeah. Brian had to do all that cutting. Brian yeah. had to do put that all together. I didn't have to do anything. I walked away from that. Yeah, yeah you know, I true. just was like, we should go to Collingswood. That was my involvement. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was true. it. And that's then true. it was all upon Brian to put that all together. He turned making hay into the episode. I think that people point to as like, well, I know I like these guys. Yes, right. You know, like right. you know, I'm 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 committed to at least following them and, and seeing where this goes because the, that one really i think resonated with people yeah and uh, but that's that's yeah brian put all that effort in on that one that's, yeah, that's, yeah I, I can't take credit for for that because he put all that together yeah. and he worked hard on that and he made that episode what it is yeah i, I understand that i understand that it's just it's, it's a funny thing this uh the idea of like what a podcast is and the difference between like being funny on purpose being yourself kind of expressing yourself in a funny way having a funny personality and i talk to people about it because i'm like you know one of the episodes i point to when i tell people about tell them steve dave i'm like one of my favorite episodes was walt goes postal Mm -hmm. and that's i think a lot of people is one of their favorites and it's like it's it's a funny show but that show is basically about you being pissed off at this woman and then being more pissed off at ming for not like being on your side about it Mm -hmm. and i'm like this is a real funny thing because it's really about your personality. It's not about you trying to be funny or trying to be well, anything. Well, you know what? Yeah, you know what? Being funny, uh, I don't know. I, I know it's, I don't want to, I don't, I don't think, I don't consider humor to be that important to me. Yeah, okay. It, 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 like, you know, Brian has said, like, it's super important to him that people think he's funny. Yeah. Right. I think Q has even said that, you know, he wants people to appreciate his sense of humor. Yeah. It's never been something that I've cared about. I've never, if somebody, everybody in my family thinks that I, I there's, I've never said anything funny because as, as far as they're concerned. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't, yeah, it's not something I place any importance on. I don't, and I don't, I don't think I ever will though. Yeah. Um, if it, if something comes out that I said that's funny. I'm not sure that it was intentional. Yeah. I'm not sure that it was intentional. <laughs> I, I really don't try to or yeah, I'm not gonna say I don't try and I, like I like it like I'm not an ent- entertainer. Yeah. I don't consider myself a funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't. It's like uh, I'm more as as authentic as I can be mm-hmm. on a mic. Mm-hmm. Without, you know, and no one's, I don't think is really truly ever a hundred percent authentic, but like, uh, 
Yeah, I'm not. Uh, yeah, I'm not trying to do bits. I'm not trying to. Right. Um, I'm not trying to make anybody yeah, laugh. You're not, try- you're not looking for a punchline. Yeah, you're kind yeah. of. You, it's almost like you care more about like what's compelling about something. Like you want to have a discussion about something, or you want to get to the bottom of something. You know, I'm not, I'm not saying that I don't think. Like I think that I. I but I'll you know we'll laugh and yeah. we'll have. But it's not like. I don't know. It's hard to describe. Yeah, I, I never ever. I don't even consider myself like to be like you know like Brian Johnson is funny. Yeah. Brian Johnson is funny. Q, it they're funny. I don't know. If, like I am not in that same class. It's interesting. Their their sar- their sarcasm and their ability to tag onto things. Yeah, I don't have that ability. Their the, everything that like that uh, if my involvement. Mm-hmm. Is them reacting to what I say? I know, I know. This is this is what I find to be so interesting about the show. This is one of the questions I have: is like, like, <laughs> what even is the show? Like, why do people love the show? People, people love yeah. the show. It's indisputable that there's a ton of people who love the show and care about it, have been following it for a decade, and really deeply care about it. Yeah. But what is the show? And it's so hard it's to hard, tell. If I had to say what it's about, yeah. It's like, and I even think it's about. Like, I mean, it's it's almost like that Seinfeld thing. It's about nothing. Yeah, right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And I tell people, I'm like, I think that the balance of roles is kind of like Brian is going to be more to this way of kind of being like a little bit more brash. Yeah, you're completely on the other side of that, and Quinn is kind of the balance of like logic to, against both sides where yeah. he's like, you're too much on this side mm-hmm. and you're too much on this side. And he like gently pokes fun at both sides and you guys can naturally, you and Brian can naturally go at it and mm-hmm. Quinn can kind of take the third, almost like the audience's point of view, yeah. which is really, really funny. But yeah, so like all, all these things are like, I think about when Tell Them Steve they've started and it's, you know, these episodes that are, like the Gizmos and Gadgets thing, the Walco's Postal, uh, Making Hay, eventually the first Christmas special, all these different things that happen. I guess before you get to that point where you, you know, the Hurricane Sandy, do you feel like the show is like just gaining momentum in terms of like the way you look at it? Because organizing seven people to come down or games or whatever, it seems yeah. like a lot. You know it what is, I mean? Yeah, yeah. There's a, there was a, there's definitely a lot of planning that has to go in when you want to have that many people yeah. you know, involved in something. And you want to make something fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, those early, those early, it just seemed like it was like friends, like just yeah, friends doing stuff. Yeah, for fun? and and there's a, and what the beauty of it is, there's there's nothing better than knowing that like if if it if it's a train wreck, it's fine. Yeah, that's that's a hundred percent true. Because everyone, you, Brian, Quinn, and then Sunday Jeff, Ming, everyone is funny or or right. themselves. Because Brian in a is way. The, like with his with his insanely just like sharp wit, sharp humor mm-hmm. can just make um, a train wreck into a, a, a fucking like you know the Grand Prix. Uh, uh, it's just yeah his ability. You know th- that's something that was that's a nice safety net where like you know you're planning all this stuff. If it, if it goes awry, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, it, it's fine. Yeah, that's that's definitely true. I I remember when I was like listening to these things. I, it's funny because I had never really had heard a podcast exactly like this. I mean, you guys have such a specific setup where it's like. You know, people know the movies, and so they know the store. And now it's you guys have the show in the store. People know where it is. And then Comic Book Men starts, and Practical Joker starts, and it's all these people working together to make this show. It's such a strange beast that it feels like that really has like a world, like a world around it. You know what I mean? Yeah, like a little universe. Yeah, exactly. And people can feel that in a way that I think they probably cannot feel for a lot of other podcasts or whatever. Well, that's I think that is a, a definitely something that is works in our benefit because I wouldn't have it any other way. I love the fact that like we yeah. have like uh, a family yeah. that comes in and out, you know, and now more than ever, you know, where we call upon the family to, you know, to be play much bigger roles, you mm-hmm. know, with the Patreon. So like Sunday Jeff, mm-hmm. 
Oh my God! They're, I know. They're, the man is like it, it, it's uh, it's so fun because he's like um and he, he, he's not like this in way in, in normal though he's not like a ten year old boy <laughs> who who just is is willing to just do whatever with a big grin on his face he's he's not like that it, it, but when we get together and we start doing a, a Sunday Jeff show. He just reverts to like like uh, up for anything, exactly. Uh, yeah, fun, fun, super fun dude who's like, <laughs> and but like, but the like tw- like you know the rest of the week, <laughs> he's this crotchety old fucking grouch. <laughs> yeah. and, but what, what? But somehow, when, like when the when everything comes together, and I'm like, hey, you want to put a, a um. You want to put this costume on, and you want to eat a fig, and pretend you're eating a, and pretend that you're. And we're having a pussy contest, a pussy eating contest. He just is like, hell yeah, and like and it, it's like it's an amazing thing because he's not like that, um, you know, the rest of the week. <laughs> so funny, yeah. I think that yeah, the universe around it is crazy. I remember so a couple of years ago. This is probably right after Comic Book Men first started airing. Um, I remember like I had already been into the tell him steve dave for a little bit and i was i i told a lot of people about it and like especially like the big games episodes mm-hmm. i was always like oh these are so crazy they're so they're so hilarious ming's uh battle rap stuff right. everything was so it's so funny um and i remember gina for christmas one year i I'd never came to the stash before even though i've been a fan of usq stuff for a long time my mom has bought me stuff from this get the stash for years i always had the vhs's then i had the dvds then i had the blu-rays i had the books everything but i just never came to new jersey i didn't really have a reason to come to new jersey and gina was like she got me a card and i remember it was a picture of you in the card this, this is because i was a fan of tell him steve dave and it's this picture it's like a, i don't know what it's from honestly but it's you at the counter like thinking i've seen it in a lot of places oh yeah it was for comic book man yeah it must yeah it must have yeah. been and it was you with a thought bubble and it was a picture of me this is what gina just made this for fun and she's like oh we're going to go to the stash and she got me a gift card ahead of time to oh buy some God. books in the stash isn't that crazy that is so strange it's yeah. so crazy so it's years and years ago so i come in we came to we came to Red Bank first time, and you were drawing at the table, and I came over, and I I forgot I don't know where I leaned. I must have leaned on the tablet or something. Maybe maybe there were light switches over there or something. And I tried to talk to you, and I leaned on the light switches, and I turned the lights off over here. <laughs> and you were like you looked up, and I was like, what the fuck? But I, I remember I just said to you something like, oh, do you have any Tom Steve Dave merch in the store? And you said no. But that's basically all it was. But it was funny because back then I told them I'm like I'm like yeah I'm like I want to work with these guys. I want to go I want to go work with these guys someday. And so it's so funny that it came true like so thoroughly because now it's been like years and years of us working together, like yeah. four years. This this is kind of the journey I want to continue is like you're doing Tell Him Steve Dave and you're probably right. It probably feels like mostly like friends getting together and doing something fun and mm-hmm. like, oh, on Sunday, seven of us are going to get together. We're going to celebrate Christmas. But in, in, But it just so happens that you know dozens of thousands of people are going to listen to it as a podcast afterwards. But then Comic Book Men comes up and there's the question of like, you know, f- from what I remember, and I don't know if this is true, but from what I remember, like the people at AMC listened to Tell Him Steve Dave and that was the inspiration for what became the show. Like they were going to do a comic book store documentary show. And from what I remember, Kevin was like, oh, you guys can film yeah. it in the store. And they were like, yeah, we're going to have like a, we're going to look around for like people. We're going to like try to get people to come and like, like you know try out for it like different comic book people like real people that work in stores and uh they said wait like who works in the store and kevin gave them tell him steve dave and they listened to tell him steve dave and they're like this is the show uh yeah kevin i heard kevin tell that story i don't know i don't know if it's true i don't know (laughs) i'm I'm, I'm thinking like what episode did they listen to (laughs) that they were like this is the show i mean (laughs) i i would love to know what what uh excerpt they listened to that made them fall in love because uh (laughs) Uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. I I believe that. Uh, I don't know if that just became legend. Uh, I, I, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, let's. But I mean, it's cool though, right? Yeah, I it's mean, cool. Yeah. But so so you you don't consider yourself an entertainer, even no. Tom Steve Dave at that point, no. which is gaining traction and getting a lot of listeners. You guys had a ton of listeners out the, out the gate. I mean, that was it was even early on in podcasting. You know, 2010 is ten years ago now. What so what did you think about when when it's like, hey, we want to do comic book men. Um, well, like I said, um, previously, I mean, I wanted to, 
give as much effort as I could for Kevin's sake because he really wanted it to be picked up. Yeah. You know, it was important to him. He really wanted it, and I knew he wanted it to, you know, to have a shot at, you know, getting picked up as a series. So yeah. um, I was committed to giving it uh, my best efforts, you know, yeah. and, and my best efforts meant I would have to fake enthusiasm for yeah. stuff um, that in in reality I, I wouldn't be so over the top for. I, I wouldn't right. act like um, like I had seen, you know, the second coming because I saw Hulk in eighty one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to I had to amp it up a bit and become, you know, a bit fake. And it you know, at times though, there would be, you know, there would be some stress involved because Yeah. You know, I'm, they I'm were sure. they people were coming to me to to do things and to interact with people who were like, you know, who were real celebrities. Yeah. You know, I like, a, you know, okay. Yeah, you uh, got, you Lindsay to, Wagner's coming in. You yeah. have to, you have to convince us that like you are, she's the greatest thing to ever walk into the stash and right. you have to like, you just can't be like, I would be, yeah. I mean, it's impressive that Lindsay Wagner's here, but yeah, I, I have to amp it up. I got to, I have to bring more to it than I normally would. And, you know, I was able to, you know, you know, do it. And it was a, it was nice feeling that when it got picked up, because, you know, it was a little bit of payback. I felt like, you know, cause Kev had given me a job, you know, he had given me a, a an occupation that I could raise a family on that I had where, where like working in a comic store was, it was virtually stress-free. Right. It was That's, a job yeah. that I had that, you know, I was able to raise a family working in a job where I never felt like I was like, Oh man, like, like so many people feel like, Oh, I don't feel like going to work tomorrow. That's, I guess that's one part of the story that I kind of skipped that I'm thinking about now is like, what was your plan if that didn't, if the story didn't happen? Um, there was no plan. You know, yeah. it was one of those rare moments of in my life where I was like, I'm just going to take a shot at this. I'm just going to take yeah. a chance. Yeah. Um, it was at a point where I probably shouldn't have just taken a chance because I had just had a child. You yeah. know, my, my first uh, daughter was just born when I took this job full time. But I just threw, uh, you know, I threw caution to the wind and was like all right i'm gonna i'm gonna sign on i'm gonna do this full time yeah and it worked out you know yeah. i mean if thing i mean if if the store closes tomorrow it was a complete and utter success in my eyes you know yeah. i was able to ra you know to raise a family in a job where i never once felt like i was like you know, like Sunday nights roll around and people are like, oh my God, I can't bear the yeah. fact that I have to go to work for the next five days at a, at a job I hate. Yeah. Uh, Kev gave me the, um, gave me the ability to never have those thoughts or have that, that awful feeling and, you know, going into a Sunday night, you know, yeah. and that's, uh, you know, so I had to, if the only way I could pay him back was like, I have to like try as hard as I can yeah. to be, engaging or or have a personality because i don't i don't consider i don't have a personality i know you know that um <laughs> i had to fake a personality for um for yeah. the shows for this for the for the um yeah the, the sake of the of the television show yeah i don't agree with the fact you have a person I, I i mean i i have one that's very and that's not everyone's cup of tea you know it's very low-key very um withdrawn a little bit yeah and not yeah. and not one that's going to work I think on television. I hear what you mean, especially in the role of where I'm supposed, I'm the quote unquote manager, You're the and, other boss and I have to be the guy that's like motivating yeah. people, and I have to be challenging uh, the guys to do things. I have to be, uh, I got to be like, I got to have more energy, yeah, than I normally do. Yeah, so I had to, I had to do my best to try to to, to do that, and you know, for all that Kevin had given to me, and. I'm not saying that I paid him back in full. I'm not saying that at all. But yeah, right. I know that he was happy, though, that the show got picked up and it was ecstatic that it got picked up for as long as it did. So you, so you kind of look at, you almost looked at Comic Book Man as like part of the deal. You're like, man, I've, I've, yes. I've benefited from this. Yeah. This is part of the deal. Yeah, this is just part of, this is just now a new wrinkle that's been put, yeah. put into effect. It, it, and it was, you know, and, and, and I want to say like, oh, like, you know, it, it was a very um, nice wrinkle, you know, because, you, you know, the, you got, 
paid, you know, to be here at work anyway. Right. To kind of play act with your friends. Mm -hmm. Talk about comics, which you, I could do Mm -hmm. uh, kind of easily for the most part. Um, Come into contact with uh, celebrities who were, you know, who are not the celebrities of today, but were still like, to me, like. Really important. yeah, Yeah. Really like had in a, a very impactful role of me growing up, you know, people like Lou Ferrigno, right. um, Adam West, yeah. Burt Ward, Lindsay Wagner. Right. I'm, sure, oh, I'm sure there's plenty of other ones I'm forgetting. Yeah. And so it was a wrinkle that was, didn't come without stress though. Yeah, I'm sure. You know, because it was like still having to run a store yeah. and also have like a crew in here. Yeah, and people being like, "Oh, we got to set up lights. Oh, we got to test audio." Yeah, oh, and I have to be, stuff. you know, and you got to be sociable. Yeah, of course. And I'm not the most sociable person, so it, right. It took me a while to um, get over that. I mean, there was times I would I would go home and I would just be like, I just can't say another word. I just feel like I've spoken too much today. Well, this is this is what's interesting about the the, the comic book man and the podcast is like it's all so generated from your mind in the moment you know what i mean yeah i'm not gonna say it's exactly improv comedy but it basically is like improvisational conversation that's mm-hmm. supposed to be entertaining all the time and doing that constantly is exhausting yeah like super exhausting yeah it can be and, and even like even like exhausting would be like when people would come in like customers would come in after the show was on for a while and there would be that reaction when they saw one of us. Oh, like if they saw, like there was a, that reaction. Like it just gave me anxiety because I, because yeah. uh, I didn't like that they were excited to see me. Because it has I these like it. high expectations of yeah, something. Yeah, I hated it. I hated that. Um, like when I turned off the lights. <laughs> no, accident. no, there would be no. There's a different reaction. Like yeah. that stop in your tracks, wide eyed. Like oh my god, it's you. Yeah, and that is that would just like. That would really give me um, uh, some sort of anxiety that, like, I did not like dealing with. Like, I was much more happier when uh, somebody walked in who had no idea there was a TV show on, and I was just a clerk. Yeah. I was just a guy that was bagging their comic books rather than, like, the guy that they saw on TV and now wanted to have a moment, you know? And, like, they want a moment, and I'm like, oh, God, okay, well, you, like, is it a good enough moment? You know, um, I that's know. what I say to you. Like, you know, that's, that's, there was a stress level for me Yeah, in trying to make sure that when they left it, they, they weren't like, well, that, that was, that didn't go as, as, as well as I hoped. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I don't want anybody to say that, but there's like, yeah. that's, there's an expectation there that I don't want, really dig. Some people dig it. Like yeah. Ming liked that. Yeah. Ming liked coming in and being like, people like being like, you're Ming Chen. Wow, it's Ming. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I didn't like it, though. I understand that. That makes total sense to me. It's funny because uh, since I was already a fan of like comic book men, I mean, I tell him Steve Dave, when comic book men started, you know, I started watching it and I was like, I love comic book men. I think comic book men is awesome. I think it's, I love Tell him Steve Dave. That, that was, you know, what brought me to the table. And that's what I think is kind of the most fun thing is just the unfiltered element of, you guys and the differing opinions and just discussing things and all the stuff that just naturally happened with the games and the Christmas stuff and yeah, every all the stuff that happened. And then I saw Comic Book Man and I saw some Tell Him Steve Dave fans at the time be like, yeah. oh, this isn't Tell Him Steve Dave. Well, and how I'm could like, it be? I'm like, it's, and like, you have to understand it's Tell Him Steve Dave, it's, it's some voices from Tell Him Steve Dave filtered through like AMC, yeah. which is a legitimate mainstream television show. They're going to have to go into... Uh, you know, they're going to have to pa- package it a certain way. There has to be a story that's going to have to have a beginning and an ending. They're going to do all these different things to make it have mass appeal as well. But then you still get the banter with you guys and the podcast parts with Kevin and even the, you know, even the fun moments like, we, you know, we're working on the tales from behind the counter stuff. You know, you see Ming in like one of the episodes and you call him, you know, you said you call him a piece of shit to his face in that in one of those episodes, like, that's the real stuff that pokes through. And that's part of it, you know? I mean, even the fact that the first episode takes place at Collingwood. 
Right. It's like it's yeah, it's crazy. It's weird. I was like, it's an alternative. I'm like, it's almost like an alternative way for you and Brian and Ming and Mike and Kevin to have their voices put into this documentary series. Right. And then, well, first of all, I I I re- recall seeing you know throughout all seven seasons though there would be TSD listeners who were like, I can't stand comic book man. It's yeah. not. It's not. Uh, it's not for me. And I I respect that. I, sure. You know why? Because it's not telling Steve Dave. Right. For one part. Because Q is She's, not yeah, involved. Yeah, Quinn's not part of it, yeah. Q is, if, if Q's not there, it's not Tell Him Steve Dave. It, mm-hmm. So, you know, and then that's like also with the Patreon stuff. Everything became a different, sh- like a different title of a show. We created all these different shows mm-hmm. because of my huge amount of respect for Q. It's like, I can't call this Tell Him Steve Dave. Right. This is not Tell Him Steve Dave. This is something totally. different. Mm-hmm. I hope you dig it. Right. I hope you like it, but right. it's not Tell Him Steve Dave. And I'm not going to I'm not going to sit here and say it is Tell Him Steve Dave because if Q's not there, it's not Tell Him Steve Dave. But that doesn't mean though that like we can't try to do something fun with Sunday Jeff mm-hmm. and create something different. Yeah. A different vibe. So right there, I understood I, I definitely never took it personal when uh, TSD listeners would be like, This sucks or this is not Compliment is is trash, it's not Tell Him Steve Dave. I mean, I, I, I know, wish you wouldn't call it trash, but um, I get why you didn't like it. I get why it wasn't Tell Him Steve Dave because it wasn't Tell Him Steve Dave. It right. was some aspects of it were there. If you were looking hard, maybe you saw them, but Q not being there made it impossible for it to be Tell Him Steve Dave. He's right. such a huge, huge, you know, important part of Tell Him Steve Dave and his voice and his humor and yeah. his energy and his... The different personality that he brings. Yeah, he's is, the, and he's the voice of reason of the show. Yeah, I mean, it could never be Tell Him Steve Dave, and I would never disrespect Tell Him Steve Dave by trying to call something Tell Him Steve Dave right, if he's not right. involved. So yeah. we tried to create other things while he's super busy with uh, with yeah. IJ. Yeah. But, and as far as, you know, the things, though, that people didn't like about Comic Book Men... Again, I got it. I got it. I mean, yeah. you, you you got it. You you are never going to be able to just put reality of the stash on there because it would fucking a, a <laughs> test pattern would beat it in the ratings. It's fucking boring. Actually, People I, would walk in and buy a comic book and walk out. There was no real no banter's were going on. You want to know something funny? So we filmed uh, Sunday at the stash, and it's about Sunday Jeff on a yeah. Sunday at the stash. And I have the GoPro angle from the front of the store and it's five hours. And I was like, what if we put that five hour video out as a joke? And it's just that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, that's what reality quote unquote reality TV is. I and mean, they have to amp it up. They have to, yeah, they have to create, create stories. Yeah, it's, you know. it's really, it's almost like a vehicle for your voices. It's a mm-hmm. vehicle for your personalities to kind of shine through. They thought that was funny. And this is a cool world to, to like document, and you guys were good uh, guides for that world. You know what I mean? That's how I think how I think about it. And it's funny. So so we kind of catch up to the point where like you know, Gramercy is in 2016, and from my point of view, there's just not a lot of video stuff from Tell Him Steve Dave. I think at that point there was Puppet Theater, uh, Tell Him Steve Dave. What's it called? Where someone mixes up all the quotes. And they made a cartoon. Oh, out of, of context. Out of context, yeah. yes. And that was awesome. Yeah. But there's not too much video stuff for six Don't years. Don't forget of, making clay. And making clay. <laughs> Let's not forget that. Remember when I said there's things I'm proud of and there's some things I'm not proud of? Well, I'll just leave it at that. Uh, someday, I hope the whole story of making clay comes out, but I don't know if that's ever able to happen. Um, I would love that. Remember the fiasco pod? It would be like that. Yeah, I, I would. I wouldn't mind it. I tell you the truth, I wouldn't mind it. I don't think Brian Q would ever, um, yeah, would ever be digest like having, or having Oz come in and and tell his side of the story and our oh, side of the story. I don't think they would. I don't think they would want any part of it because yeah. that, I think there's such a harsh feeling still. Yeah, I, I'm sure he has harsh feelings too. I mean, yeah. uh, things didn't turn out the way he wanted them. Yeah, uh, on both sides, there was mistakes were made. Uh, on both ends yeah. some were more egregious than others yeah. some were more were so fucking beyond the pale that i'm like how did you think that how did you think this would go when you fucking yeah. did this i know and but lessons learn though yeah things that everything leading up to all the things we're doing on patreon were lessons learned on how to deal with people how mm-hmm. to 
Um, be cautiously optimistic about yeah. bringing people in. Don't rely. And uh, mm -hmm. one thing, things I learned was don't rely on one person to to bring something to fruition because if that one if that one person fucking goes off the rails, mm -hmm. you're fucked. I remember at first. I think I think it was when we film, filmed Scream Bear and Scream because we had worked on a couple of things together. I think I I did a couple of things with you guys before that. And I remember we were. I was leaving, and you're like, "Thank you so much for coming to film." And I'm like, "Yeah, yeah." yeah. And you know, for me, I'm like, "This is great. I'm I'm happy to film with you guys. I've grown up knowing about you guys and liking all the stuff that you're part of." And now tell them Steve, Dave, and everything. And you were like, "Every time I email you, I think I'm just never going to hear back again." Every time I try to talk to you again, I feel like you, then one day you're just going to disappear. I said that. Yeah, yeah, you said that to me. Yeah, but because uh, I mean, you you feel you get um, that feeling of like this could happen again, you yeah, know, it, and it just like you know things can, can go wrong, you know. I mean, it just happens. That's life, you know. But you know, thankfully though, the, you know, so far, knock on wood, things have <laughs> have not gone wrong, you know. Yeah. You know, I mean, you're you're a, a valuable member. And a contributor, and you know we're we're lucky to uh, to have. I'm lucky I read that postcard <laughs> all the way through because if I, I I don't think I'm not sure uh, if we would have ever connected. You know, probably. I know, I know, I know. Uh, so though so it's funny. So we so we catch up to that point. We do Gramercy, and then it's what's interesting is like you guys didn't have a lot of video projects. Then all of a sudden we had like three or four in a row that were just kind of random. There was previous to Patreon. It was yeah. Gramercy. Mm -hmm. Uh, where we also released the the, the wedding the, the wedding footage that was shot years before. Yeah. Um, then you were like, oh yeah, we also want to do this thing called TESD TV. We shot it, and we have the Blu-ray wrap. Like, can you figure out how, how to like get it made into Blu-rays? Because I had my yeah. basically when we did Gramercy, I was the one that found a Blu-ray like distribution house, and I set up that deal, and so I set that up again, and I think I did a voice in that too, and then. There was one more thing, elephants right? Elephants in the room. Elephants in the room. You were like, oh, yeah. So basically, we, you filmed elephants in the room largely because the lights were in the store. Right. And the the crew was around for comic book men. Yep. And you were like, let's film a game show. Because you guys had done, well, obviously, games on the show. I mean, the origins were, were I mean, it's not as pretty. Uh, um, we were working on comic book men, and I got into a tiff with somebody. I won't say who it was. And I was so pissed off that I, I felt like so much negative energy. I was like, um, I should take all this energy and just create something, a new game or something. Yeah. And I started to come up with all that, all that stuff for elephants room, all that, all the little bits and yeah. games and little contests and the podcasts that, you know, the, the awkward podcast that we, everybody would be forced to do. Yeah. And, I felt it was like I was like I think this is strong. I think this is really strong. And I said and I said to get it. We should get costumes. And that's the first time I'm like that's the first that's the origin. All that stuff you're seeing on Patreon. Yeah, it's kind of like you know that it all starts really there, but like with the safari costumes. Um, and if he if get him was like if like if get him didn't if go like, eh. if get him was like it wasn't anything less than like. Yeah, you can get safari hats. He goes, yeah, yeah. and if he didn't like say like immediately like like yeah, you can get those hats, the pith hats. He goes, yeah. like I would have like I was immediately like we're doing hats, we're doing costumes. Yeah, and I felt like it was it was big enough where it could be a special project. Mm -hmm. And I asked the guys on the crew on Comic Book Man if they would stay one night and and film it all. Yep, they agreed to do it. Had a blast doing it, and we gave you all the footage. Yeah. And you edit it all together, put it all together, yep. and um, the the end result was something again. One of those things that I'm just like, this came out way better than I ever thought it could ever come out. Um, yeah, the commercials, the, the all everything. It's, commercials. A, it's it's a great, it's great Greenberg, little Greenberg. project that I'm super proud of. Yeah, and it was, you know, it, it started us on the path of doing more things like that. Yeah. On the Patreon. It's just interesting that those three projects happened like, you know, in a row. They pretty much did. Gramercy, TESD TV, yeah. and Elephants in the Room. And then I remember we were talking about the commercials and we're like, oh, let's have people submit them. That'd be fun. Mm -hmm. And you were like, oh, I had this idea for the Scream Bear and Scream. Yep. 
And you were like, do you, would you want to come up and film it? And I'm like, hell yeah. And so I came up and I remember it's, it's, it's still weird. That's the first time I'm really talking to you after we started working together in person. And we were like matching up all the Mexican monster movie scenes to like our actions and saying like, well, what can you do that looks like it's going to be part of this where it's like throwing the spear and right. stuff like that, all that stuff. I'm meeting Brian for the first time and we're filming stuff with Sunday Jeff. Sunday Jeff is there. Yeah. It's Dollar Shane. Yeah. And it was crazy because to, to be completely honest, when you asked me to do that, I didn't really know if I could pull that off. I was like, I don't know if I can do this. Like this, this is, it seems like it's a really strange idea. I'm like, and I remember I was, I was sending you like samples of what I was working on and I was, became so obsessed with making it look identical to that original footage, okay. which is, which is really important for, yeah. for it to work, you know? And, it, and, and I love Scream Baron Scream. Yeah. I, if, if we ever want to do like an expanded type of project like that, I would love to. It came out so yeah. funny and effective. It was so funny. I think people were, were um, taken aback Me too. by it. Because they were shocked. It, it, it's so different. It was like, it was so, like I said, it, it would propelled us onto the road to be a lot more sillier. Yeah. A lot more um, goofier, yeah. you know, like the, some of the things we would wind up doing on Frank Five Rewind. Yeah, all that, you know, and like I've, I told this on on the Conflict Man Pod, though, like being on that show, though, yeah, for those seven years was like the shells and um, his. The way he embraced it and the way he spoke to me and, and and like wanted to hear ideas and wanted to do things that I wanted to do was an amazing boost of confidence that like a guy who's in his position mm -hmm. it wants to do what I want to do. I mean that yeah. that that is weird because I, I mean that is not something that uh, you know uh, like the week earlier I'm like I'm my, I'm ordering from Diamond you know six copies of Fantastic Four. And then the next week, you know, a guy who's worked on multiple TV shows is like, well, what do you want to do? You got any ideas that we could film a show around? Yeah, to put on AMC. And then it happens. And then he's happy about it. And yeah. he, and he, you can see how much fun he's having. That's a, that's a boost to your, um, self esteem. Your self esteem. Yeah. Cause you're, you're willing then to do other things. You're willing then to like do, you're willing to uh, allow yourself to, um, say, to your friends, like you want to do this, yeah. or stuff that I wouldn't have probably wouldn't have even offered up to them because I feel it was too silly or too stupid. Right, right, and even even to like instead of just having an initial thought, you go way further down that path and say, yep. "Oh yeah, if we did this, we could do this and this and this," as opposed to stopping at the beginning. Yeah, you know, it's like like I said with on the Frank Five Rewind. It's like if I don't do if I'm not on comic book man, I never uh, am willing to go and do like dance. Yeah. On screen, right? With Frank, I'm never able to, to do. I'm like it's like all that stuff is just just comes from getting. You know what's it called when you get a, a you get a response, a positive response. Yeah, and when you get positive response like that, you're like, okay, well, maybe we can do this then. Maybe maybe it isn't stupid if yeah. I suggest this. Yeah, it's it's crazy. It, it's and in the timeline is funny because it goes like you know those three Blu-rays. Um, and then comic book man doesn't get picked up. Yeah. And I remember cause I'm first working with you guys and I was kind of randomly working on these projects continually just cause they kind of came one after the other. And then you're like, Oh, we're going to start a Patreon. We're going to start a Patreon when comic book man ended. And that's when we, you know, we didn't really, we were just like, Oh, let's, you know, you were just like, we want to film some stuff. We didn't really talk about what the future was going to hold in terms of how much we were going to do probably because you didn't know at all. I didn't know. Yeah. See, this, it was basically going to be all audio. Yeah. One of the things I wonder about is like the conversation of like, let's turn, tell them Steve, they have the podcast and let's do the Patreon. Cause I think that's an interesting conversation from your point of view. Just be, um, you know what I mean? Let's get Brian, something. Uh, Brian, when he found out about, the comic book man not being picked up. I remember he sent me a text going like, holy shit, I'm fucked. Yeah. Cause he has, you know, he, he was counting on that. Yeah. You know, he had no job. He yeah, was he's, counting on that income. He's starring in a, a huge TV show for seven years. You know, he had, he was counting on that. I remember that text and I was like, well, we talked about doing this. You, you know, you mentioned that, you know, because he had mentioned how successful uh, Ralph Garman's was. Oh yes, right. And he had started one a little bit earlier, mm -hmm. and he and uh, 
it, it was, you know, he had a huge, great turnout. And I was like, well, why don't we just do that then? I said, you know, I mean, now we'll have nothing but time to do it. I yeah, said, well, yeah, there's yeah. nothing holding us back now other than like Q right. still being heavily involved with, with IJ though. Right, right, right. Uh, so we had to go to Q and be like, we want to, you know, do you want to do this? You're okay with us doing this because, um, you know, you have a, you know, it's your, it's your thick gig too. You're, you know, you, we, we know you have, don't have a lot of time, but are you okay if, if we start this? And he was like hundred percent supportive and he was like, I'll, you know, when I'm available, uh, I'll, I'll come down and do stuff. Yeah. And, but yeah, go for it. Let, you know, do it, do it. You guys, uh feel is the is the right thing to do and we did the four audio pods you know it was like we're gonna do uh puck nuts puck nuts tidbits uh sunday jeff show and uh space, space monkeys. monkeys yeah we did the uh any given sunday video like, yeah as like a precursor to yeah. to the all new sunday Again, jeff show. something that like um when you when you say it to these guys, like I want to do NFL films, only because I love NFL films. Yeah, right. No other reason. I, those guys don't want to do NFL films. They have no interest in it. Yeah. But I'm like, I text them, and I'm like, I want to do this. And to their benefit, they always say yes. They yeah. always are like, always say yes. Yeah. And there's never like, like cause I would be self conscious. Like I could see Jeff easily being like, I want you to wear a headband and pretend that you're spiking a ball poorly. I want get him. I want you to run around <laughs> knowing full well that you the way you're going to run in slow motion is going to look ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. And they're all in all the time, and it's it's uh, it's truly um, you know lucky that you know you're um, I have around me people who are up for you know they're not up for everything <laughs> uh, they're not for everything but like because i mean but they're up for almost anything yeah and um yeah that that sunday sunday what was it it's called any given sunday any given sunday yeah it came out really funny it came out funny but it was just a tiny little morsel and yeah we were trying to do live streams Yes, that's right. That was one of the things that we were going to promise to higher tiers was live streams. Yeah, and there was a lot. And I was getting so fucking frustrated with, yeah. with because the, seeing the comments of like, streams down. Yeah. Streams down. And I was just like, people are paying for this shit. People deserve better than this. Wait. People deserve, <laughs> they're giving us money for this. Yeah. I want them to walk away happy. And it sounds like they're not happy with this live stream bullshit. When you started the Patreon, did you think it was going to be a huge jump in responsibility or were you yes. kind of more like, oh, oh yeah, you yeah, did? I knew it would be. Did you think it was going to like be so successful and last for so long? It doesn't. It feels like it just started. It does feel like it just started. Yeah, it feels I know. like it just started. I know, but, but I know we've it's been done going like, on for a while. But dude, yeah, there's a big body of work behind it. Like, yeah. Yeah, like there's a big library that's been building up every week. It's crazy. Um, but yeah, I knew. I knew it. I knew that like I'm the type of person that I was like, I took so much like uh, like I wanted like I said from the beginning like when we, when I talk about 2012 Sandy like these people deserve yeah more from me yeah I knew if I did the Patreon I was like well if we're gonna do gifts and we're gonna do this I want I need to be the last line I need to be like you know the guy that like falls on yeah I I, I just need to be that guy I can't I cannot like relegate that to somebody else I need like. I need to be the guy that's like getting the stuff ordered on, getting the stuff sent out. My, although my daughter does a lot of it though, but like yeah. I'm on top of her to do it and everything. I need to be that person or else I'm like, I feel like I'm not giving what I should be giving. Yeah. 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 It's uh, it's crazy. I, I remember yeah, when it started, um, I was so, I was psyched on just the Patreon idea, not even in terms of being involved. I was just excited that you guys were doing that with the extra you know, different episode every week. And I thought it was super appropriate too, because there were just so many characters that were part of the show by that point in time with Ming and Sunday Jeff and get him. Get him and then eventually, I mean, Frank. even Frank five and all these different people. Well, Frank, yeah, Frank was, um, he was a little bit like, he was an unknown. Like we, I, I had no, I had no <laughs> expectations that it would work out. Yeah. None. Yeah. And he reminds me uh, a little bit of Sunday. Jeff was like, he has that boyish <laughs> charm and energy. Oh. Like Brian's a, di Brian's a different personality. Like, like I don't want to put Brian in um, 
a, a, a weird costume because yeah. that's not his personality. Right. His personality is biting yep. sarcasm. Yeah. Sunday Jeff is personality is goof. Yeah. Goofy, silly, and yeah. like he will go into a silly costume. Get him the same thing. Yeah. They they so they add and bring different aspects that me and Brian don't bring. Yeah. Yeah. And and to me that is super fun. I, I hope it transcends and uh, other people are enjoying it just as much as I am because, um, I mean, like we, some of the stuff we do on Frank five, I mean, it, it's super silly, but like, I hope people feel the same amount of fun that, uh, we have doing it though, because he's a great dude. He's, um, He's, I wish he was, I wish he lived closer. He Me would too. be involved in a hell of a lot more stuff. Yeah, exactly. I know, I know what you mean. It's, it's crazy. So Patreon starts and the Patreon, were you surprised by how successful it was immediately? Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, because I think that people, people expected it to not, there's a lot of people I know, but like there's a, one of the biggest um, supporters of Tom, Steve, Dave, one of the biggest guys I like. A guy who's been there from the beginning, um, curator. Yeah, he sent me an email after the uh, after the Tom Steve they Patreon was up for a while. It had to be up for over a year, mm -hmm. and told me that he thought it was the worst idea that we would ever have. He said that there is no way in hell he thought that we would put out weekly podcasts and that it would devolve into a fiasco, and that people would be resentful. Yeah, and that um, and that and that resentfulness on their on the listeners' part would would bleed into us being resentful of the listeners. Wow, he was all he was. His instincts were right, <laughs> yeah. Because like there was like we weren't putting out an episode um, as regularly as as people want us to. Yeah, so I think that they felt like their their apprehensions were not unfounded. That like they right. can't. There's no way they're going to be able to put out. Uh, a weekly thing on time every time week in and week out yeah and i'm super proud to say that we haven't missed a week yeah, since we haven't. it started yeah we it haven't missed a week since it started it, it started. hasn't missed a week and we are we have enough content now to get us uh, into the winter months yep and uh and that all comes from like i said that response that level of like like i owe like i like even like like i feel like that when i owe somebody something like kevin I feel like I got to give as much as I can give. And I felt the same way with the, with the, with the listeners. I felt that if they're going to give us money, mm -hmm. I'll be damned if I'm not going to try to, to give them as much as I can give uh, and make sure that like, I'll do move heaven and earth to make sure we get something out week in and week out. Yeah. And, and the, and the, and the merchandise, you know, ordering stuff that I hope people will dig and enjoy because you know they're they're paying a lot of money. I want them to be happy. Yeah. And for the most part, I mean, knock on wood. I mean, it, it has been uh, met with a, a lot of people being happy with the uh, with the outcome and ha what has come out of it so far. Yeah. But it gets tougher every fucking cycle. You're like, <laughs> what 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 new thing can I slap? Tell him Steve Dave on. You know, like we. I mean, we got shower curtains coming out. <laughs> We got a that's shower amazing. curtain. Cut. It looks awesome. I love too. it. Yeah, I but we got a shower curtain that's going to be coming out. I don't know when this is airing, but uh, when this is dropping, but yeah, may, but in September, yeah. shower curtains will be <laughs> will be delivered to one of the tiers. That's amazing. I yeah, love it that. looks awesome though too. I, I bet it does. I bet it does. No, it's it's awesome. It's just it to me. It's it's so fascinating because, like I said, it's a project that's based around your guys like all of you, you know, you, Quinn, Brian, and then the extended people, their personalities interacting. That's what people care about is the relationships that exist, the friendships, the friendships that exist, the familiness, the it, family, the family aspect of it. it I, I don't listen to any other podcast. I don't, I don't know anything about what anybody else is doing out there. Yeah. I, I imagine there has to be something like that out there, right? Where the, like that a big extended family that comes in. It's, and, it's really tough. There's not something that compares because you guys have this lead of like, Hey, we were starting to be in like the public eye or people knew about us 15 years before we started the podcast. And then we slowly, you know, people knew about us more and more. And then we have a home base that is public. That's really strange. 
You know yeah. what I mean? Everyone knows <laughs> where you are. They have a home base is public. By the way, two of us have this TV show on AMC. One of us has a show on True TV. It's just like all this stuff. It's like there's not something that I think can compare to that. There's definitely other. Well, sh- I, yeah, I, I bet in terms of I, I know what you're saying. Like we had a le- like we have a leg up because we're well, like it, like Q is so visible. It, it's expansive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I th- I mean like is there like because I love it. I I I cherish the um the circle of like of all the people that we bring in at, from time to time. You know, Troy. Yeah. Chris Ladondo, Frank Giddem, Sunday. Tim. Uh, Tim, Tim the record, the store, record clerk. store clerk. Now Brian Nichelle is playing a much bigger oh, role, and I love it. Love it too. I and, and to me, I like. I want. I like. I love adding new members to the growing family. Yeah. And I, I think, and I know that people um, appreciate that. Like that picnic episode we did. Yeah. I I couldn't believe some of the comments that were sent to me of how like how it touched people. Like to yeah. have just friends out in the backyard playing wiffle ball. And that's, and none of it was, it's not bullshit. We, you know, I mean, yeah. Like, did we get together because we wanted to create some content? Yeah. But it's not like we're not all friends anyway. Like Mike, yeah. Mike showing up, Ming showing up, yeah. and, you know, that's all. Yeah. It's all, it's just the, the circle that, that we have. And it's, I think it's nice to showcase everybody in the family from time to time. It, it's a nice uh, ability to have, and I'm not sure. Like I said, I don't listen to a lot of other podcasts. Do they have that kind of like that cast that you it's, can call upon? It's pr- the, the closest thing is probably something like similar to like when Howard Stern would have you know his cast of characters come in and out that he knows. But like I said, it's it's hard to find probably people with as much of a history and such an expansive group of people. There are probably other podcasts with a smaller version of it. You know right. what I mean? That's what I think about. Yeah, it's honestly, so, you know, we did uh, Frank Five Happy Days was early on in the Patreon and we were doing the Patreon for a while. We've been doing it for over two years now. Yeah. We've come out with a million different videos and podcasts and stuff. And eventually I was like, you know, I saw, I, uh, this is just like what I thought in my head. I was like, I know how Walt felt about Happy Days the TV show because we filmed the happy days thing. And I'm like, I'm like, tell him Steve Dave has become like Walt's happy days. That's what it is where it's all these different characters and they're all interaction interacting. And this person has a funny thing. I mean, you guys are joking about Quinn's air conditioning on the newest episode of tell him Steve Dave. It's about your real relationships and the different people that bring different elements of things to the table. Right. Yeah. You know? Because it's, like, yeah, because you know, you everybody has, is, has such a different, different, yeah, yeah, like you know, like like you wouldn't you wouldn't go after Ming if Ming's air conditioner broke. Yeah, the jokes wouldn't have been the same because you know you can make you can poke uh, fun at at Q because you know it, it would you know make fun of him that it was his walk-in closet that yeah. lost his air conditioner. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, and 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 you know, and, and Frank's gonna be like, I drove four hours to see, yeah, you know, Lucille Ball's <laughs> hands pushed into <laughs> cement. Yeah, it's, everyone brings. A really different element and different personality. Well, that's what, to the like, table. you know, the, one of the Frank Five projects that, like, again, it's like it, it's up there with like the making Hay documentary is the Batman one. Yeah, it's super special to me because we were able to get so many people in that in that uh, cast of rogues for the yeah. for Batman. Yeah, that was something that I wanted to do for so long. And it finally was able to work itself out with everybody's schedule. Yeah. That one is one that I'll uh, I'll remember. Like when the Patreon's done yeah. and we're not making any more stuff. Yeah. That's one that will be uh, remembered super fondly because um, of how special it was to have everybody involved. Yeah. A hundred percent. I'll be honest. Sometimes when I, when I'm editing the, the projects that we do, especially the ones that are based on stuff that you love, like $6 million man, different things like mm-hmm. that. When I work on it, I think about the idea of like, I want to make something that Walt looks back at and feels like this truly represented how I felt about you this. Have. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, on multiple occasions. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that Batman 66 one, it, I remember everybody who saw it was just blown away by it. Um, the comic book man, you know, the, that first episode, you know, I told Michelle, I was like, you know, I, I think... It's going to be funny. I think there's going to be moments where it's uh, where there's some heartfelt moments, and there are. I mean, I don't. Uh, 
I know coming up, I know uh, like that first season, there's a whole bunch of moments where it's not just about yucks. Yeah, it's right. about telling people, you know, like how like how much y- that you will remember them long after, you know, that you didn't even think moments that touched you or t- moments that meant were significant to you. Yeah, you know, and you. So there will be nice moments along with hopefully laughs too. Yeah, right. No, it's 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 been a crazy crazy uh, crazy ride, and it's and it's I just I I'm glad we got to sit down because the idea of you even starting this podcast being like, well, I'm not an entertainer, and it's like here's the sixty video well, project. Do you I did. notice though that I have? Well, I mean, uh, I mean, people are taking a lot more notice now. It seems like everybody's saying it now, but like you don't do anything. You just you just show up and you have everybody else do it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, people have figured that out and I'm like fuck it took it took a while but yeah finally someone realized that yeah like I'm I love pr- putting other people in the um in the position like like I wanted Nichelle to lead Compliment. Sure. I wanted Sunday Jeff to be the star of his own podcast. Yeah. Uh Frank 5. Yeah. Guy I didn't even know. Yeah. I was like I want you to lead it. I know. I f- I'm a much more comfortable in having somebody else do it, but yet I still want to be able to kind of control the narrative, <laughs> which th- is weird. I, th- I think what it is is that you feel like you know what makes a good show, so you're like, here's the way the the flow should be, and, stuff and I like feel that. like I know how I could present. Like get him, like get him's the perfect example. Oh yeah, I want to be able to. Pre- I feel I could present the best side of get him. Yeah, to the listeners rather than the the, the multifaceted <laughs> side that I know that like people don't want to know that side. <laughs> People don't want to know that side. Yeah, yeah I, I, I could present your best face. Yeah. Let me do it. Yeah. Let me show the world how you should be. Yeah, <laughs> or how how fun you can be, and and not have to deal with all the other bullshit that comes along with it. Oh yeah, but yeah, that yeah, I guess that's true though. I'm I'm like, I want to I want to foist them into the spotlight to the yeah and then but i also be able want to be able to control how <laughs> how it goes which is a strange <laughs> yeah. uh feeling yeah but i i definitely realize i have that though yeah no it's great and putting it's- tim the record store clerk as as a, like you know bringing him involved and having him run purveyors posers and playlists yeah um yeah it's great it's weird yeah like yeah i, I do well, like that though i i do enjoy bringing different voices and having them be uh right the uh the person, not I don't know what's not leading, but like being like it's like the, it's like the main personality of of an idea. So so if you're like, let's do a show about music. Who do I know that knows about music? This person should be in this role. Yeah. Here's how the show should go. Yeah, the kiss ones, you know, yeah, like exactly. yeah, like I I love. I I mean, people hate that kiss one. <laughs> People people hate the Kiss shows, and I'm like, how can they hate this? I think it's like uh, I five think, people. No, it's way more than five people. It's way more than five people. I I don't understand what it, what it is. Is like I I took for granted that not everybody watching and listening grew up in the 70s yeah. loving glam rock. Yeah. And I just assumed that everybody uh, was me, and that uh, people would adore. Four middle-aged guys wearing kiss masks and kiss shirts. What, 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 like what's it? I mean, they're like they're like made to look like the kiss costumes. I forget yeah. what that's called. And I was wrong. <laughs> but we got so many in the can. We are. I am not pulling the plug on the kiss pod. We got too many in the can. I paid too. I paid too much to, for those kiss episodes already. <laughs> <laughs> They're coming out, regardless if people hate them or not. I love them. I love them too. I don't know how the fucking opening can't win people over. I, that's how I feel too. The I, opening is so awesome. I know. I, I I love them too. And it's funny because I'm I'm you know I'm a I'm a good example of someone you're talking about. I was born in 1984, right. so every show we do, you know, of of Frank Five or the Kiss stuff. It's not stuff that I know. I you learned about it. You grew up in the it. '90s. I grew up in the '90s. So yeah, you have no affection for for any of the things we're talking about, and I forget that at times. So and I get blinders on, and I'm like, I remember telling Jeff, we're like, we're going to do this Kiss show where we review every album, and he was like, that's going to be the fucking greatest podcast you ever do. <laughs> yeah. And boy, how wrong we were! Because I was like, I know it's going to be great. People are going to eat it up. People are going to love it. I mean, I get e- I got an email that was fucking 15 paragraphs telling me how like they're quitting the Patreon because it's a vanity project. That was the exact word he used. And I wrote back, I was like, fuck yeah, it's a vanity product. I'm, I'm interested in it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I don't know. If that's vanity, then so be it. But like, what do you want me to do? I think I think the idea of, of personalities uh, 
talking about things that they love and that being able to, to kind of like get through to people. I think that that is common. And we certainly have done that with Frank five. I got to imagine a lot of the people that like Frank five's rewind. Every, yeah, have most not, people not, love that. Has yeah. not seen a lot of those shows though. Yeah. We're changing that around though. Yeah. We've, we're definitely <laughs> moving away from the shows that I grew up with, but we need to come up with a hook on the kiss pod, a new wrinkle for the next time we go in, because we got to do something to change it up because something, something a little bit more, I don't know what it is, but we got to figure out a new wrinkle to add into the pods when we start filming a uh, uh, rock and roll you know, podcast. What's it called? It's called, <laughs> <laughs> it's called rock and roll night and podcast every day. Yeah. We got to, we got to inter- inject something new into it. That's going to capture everyone's fancy because what, what's happening right now ain't doing it. Yeah. Just talking about the old kiss albums and songs, but we'll figure it out. Yeah. We'll figure it out. Definitely. Or if we don't, oh, well, then so it's a skip week then for most people. <laughs> Well, yeah, man. Well, I appreciate you sitting down with me. Oh, no problem. I, I want to. I've wanted to do this for a long time because I do find you to be like a conundrum of a of a person. Because I know you feel like you're not an entertainer, but how no. can someone who's not an entertainer produce so much? <laughs> so, like, so much, so much of your time is based around recording on video and and audio. Your voice and your feelings and your thoughts. That's- I did another podcast um, recently. Yeah, I don't I ever that. really do podcasts. I yeah. do. I just do tell them Steve Dave related stuff, and that's it. I've told so many people, no, no, thank yeah. you. I'm flattered, but you know, I'm not interested. Right. And um, I did another. I did one when COVID first hit. Yeah. I was locked down. Somebody sent me a really nice email, and I, I agreed to do it. Yeah. This is my last podcast outside. Tell them Steve Dave. <laughs> Because after that, I, I cannot, I, I just cannot stop saying no to people because now so many people have reached out to me and like, oh. you want to do my podcast? You, I saw you did this podcast. You want to do I my know. podcast? And I'm like- I know. And you're already hate, like crushed with- Yeah. I hate saying no. And I feel horrible saying no, but I'm just not no interest in doing anything other than the, what I have to do. The huge workload of doing yeah. that stuff that you already I, have. I, 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 and what more can I talk about though? Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, that's why I'm talking about Kiss fucking songs, because there's nothing left to talk about anymore after 10 years. I, I understand. <laughs> I know. I was like, I was like, ah, oh, when I go into this, I don't yeah, want to. You're, you're my last non Tell Steve Dave podcast I'll ever do. <laughs> wow. This is ex- I don't know if it's an exclusive or, <laughs> but well, yeah, that's it. Well, I appreciate it, man. Thank you. You know, we've been uh, working together for the past like three or four years. And it's, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I hope you continue to uh, want to work with us. But I, I mean, I've heard rumblings that uh you know from uh, somebody else we're working on that uh, that your your talents have been noticed so hopefully uh hopefully you don't get uh stolen no i, t- I tell everybody i'm like i'm like if it's up to me i work on tell them steve dave projects until there is no tell them steve dave oh wow well, that's how i, I feel I, I i imagine uh the right i i, I, I I, I I appreciate that, but I, I don't believe in any, in any of that. <laughs> oh, it's true. It's true. It's true, man. I, I promise. You All know, right. one of my favorite things we ever filmed was the 2018 Halloween episode with the Baron transformation. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. one of my favorites. And I was, I was watching it recently for some reason. I'm like, man, it was just me and Rupert, who I love. I love that dude. And it was pretty intimate. There wasn't like a, a big crew here. It was just me and him. And then I it think was Victor just, was there, right? Because he was helping Victor out was with doing the photography. Photographer, yeah, yeah. That was that was the first time he ever worked with us. Yeah, he came yeah, yeah. He, he it was weird how he came about. He just showed up one afternoon. I know. <laughs> at the store, walked back here, and was like, "Hey, um, I'm here. I'm. A, I, I know you don't do a lot of pictures on Tom yeah. Steve Dave. I think you should do this." And I'm like, he was so polite. Yeah. And so nice. Yeah. I said, and this was like a couple of days before we did that that shoot. Yeah, and he said, "I'll do, I'll come down and do anything." He goes, "You whatever you name it." And I was like, "Well," and I never do this. I never do this. And like, it's almost like the postcard thing. It was like it was yeah. meant to be because he's been very valuable, it's invaluable. I mean, he's been awesome. Yeah, is I never say, okay. Yeah. You know, let, let, just come down. I <laughs> yeah. never do that. And yeah. I, but he was so fucking nice. I was like. We're doing this Halloween thing. I said, yeah. I don't know if there's really anything for you to do. Yeah. But if you want to come down and help out and snap some photos, yeah. I'm sure that'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. And he came down and he filled the cauldron. Yes. Up for that. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, he filled did. the cauldron. Filled, yeah. It took him hours to fill the cauldron. <laughs> yeah, that's and right. And that just made me go like, 
I got to find something for him to do. He's, yeah. He was so cool about yeah. coming out because he was a photographer and I had him fill in a cauldron. Yeah, yeah. With water, yeah. like a pitcher of water over and over and over again because the cauldron was too big to get in the sink. I remember. Yeah, yeah. It was too and big to get in the yeah, sink. Yeah, and that, it's just one of those things. It's just like you don't know how life is going to work out. Like yeah. him walking in on any other day yeah. other than the fact that we had something coming up within two days. Right. I might have just like been like, yeah, give me your email and would and have been lost to yeah. the hundreds of emails that I've gotten over the course of the last 10 years that, right. but yeah, I guess it was just meant to be sometimes. Yeah, man. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you, yes, uh, thank you. letting me be a, a part of this world as well. You know, um, it's been a lot of fun and, uh, you've given me a ton of creative freedom with this stuff, which I really appreciate. Yeah. A lot of times. Well, like I, I, I tell everybody, I say, um, your sense of comedic timing and editing is amazing. You're like you got it. You get us and you get how it should be cut and you get what should be on camera and what shouldn't be. And that is that's that's not easy to come by because you know you know how to edit it to it put us in the, the our funniest light. I appreciate that. Yeah, you definitely and I, I told I, I tell that to anybody who wants to talk about uh, these projects <laughs> which isn't that many <laughs> <laughs> no i def i definitely feel like when we started working together more and more i was like oh it's definitely like uh like a kindred spirit kind of thing in terms of like what we think is the right move to make for yeah. projects and stuff like that which has been awesome i mean like the last two things you've turned in i mean i've had absolutely nothing to give you because i've been so <laughs> fucking smitten with it you know so and that's a that's a it's a credit to your your skills as a as an editor. Well, I appreciate it, man. I, I love doing this stuff. I mean, the last time we came down with that six that six day marathon of projects was uh, I love that stuff. It's so fun. It's like so energizing. Oh, it's no. it. <laughs> no. I know no, you were sleeping no. on the floor by the last yeah, day. <laughs> yeah, the last night. Yeah, I was actually sleeping on the floor because I was I had checked out. I know. I had checked out the night before during the one of the ones. I was just like, I want to I want to be done with this. I know yeah. it was a lot, but it was yeah. great. It was really fun. It was I had a ton of fun. And uh, I think the projects are getting better and better. If you want my honest opinion, uh, you would, you know, I I think so too. I I see um, the bars, the bar gets raised every once in a while, and yeah. like the Frank Five Batman, the bar was raised. Yeah, I think so too. And I think the bar will be raised again on the new uh, Frank Five film rewind that we're going to kick off soon mm -hmm. in a couple months. I think the bar gets raised again. Yeah, I agree. I think. The comic book men pod. The comic book men pod. Yeah, like I know. it's it's um it's fun. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think that's the key. If you can, if you can get that fun feeling that we're all having here, and get it somehow, get it on video or on audio. Yeah. Hopefully that you know people can also feel the fun in the room. Yeah, they do. That's why they keep coming back, man. All right, bud. Well, right, thank you so well, thank much you. for doing this. It's been yeah. uh, it's been an awesome couple of years, and to many more. Of, yeah. of walking through these doors <laughs> and staying until two in the morning sometimes. That was super interesting. You did a you did a you did a very good job uh, with with Walt. And Thank you. Pushing and prodding him in the right places. I, I know. I felt I, uncomfortable saying some things. I was like I was like, oh, should I ask him about this? Should I be this direct about why did you do this? Why did you? <laughs> I felt uncomfortable. You really, you shouldn't have shouted jacques at him. Um, I think uh, yeah, I think you did a good job. I think I was surprised at how forthcoming he was. Me too. He was uh, awesome. because I think of so Walt great. as as like a private person. Yeah, he kind of is. He, he was he was great. I I, I really really appreciate. It. It and awesome. uh, also, I, I I think I was surprised to hear you know that he doesn't consider himself an entertainer, and he's so entertaining, exactly, and, and has done so much work, like purposely yes. to entertain. It's not like he's exactly. just a funny guy at parties. Yeah, he's just like I'm I'm working in these entertainment fields, right, to entertain people. And he's like, no, not an entertainer, and I know. Uh, and also the uh, the idea that you know somebody as accomplished as he is mm -hmm. could still be like, you know, I don't feel like I fit in, you know, the imposter syndrome. Kind right, of thing. right, 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 like, right. I, it's, it always amazes me when other people have imposter syndrome as though I were the only real imposter in the world. Yes, right. Which, you know, doesn't make any sense. Right. But uh, yeah, really, really interesting and, yes. uh, and, and intriguing. So good work. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, it was great. I can't, I, you know, I appreciate it so much. Um, and if you're listening to this episode and you think it's fun, you know, please continue to check out our podcast. It's the Chuck and Brad podcast. Subscribe to us. Give us a rating on iTunes. Oh, please. Retweet this or share it, whatever you have for social stuff. Um, but before we go, 
I did want to bring something up because I thought that the Tell Him Steve Dave listeners who are listening to this might enjoy this. So Brad is kind of a funny guy. Thank you. An odd guy. Well, I don't know. Very, th- th- he's soft spoken. Thanks. Soft spoken and uh, mousy to a fault. I'd say it hurts. Would, would you say that? Yes, I would. <laughs> and uh, it's weird. The fact that you're like that, I think it's funnier when bad things happen to you. Thank you. Is that hurtful? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> well, listen. A little bit. I think that uh, there's a story I wanted you to tell on this because I think people would like it. Okay. And it's the story of when you had a issue with a Salvation Army Santa Claus. <laughs> All right, folks. Let me set the scene for you here. The year is 2003. Brad's kind of a sad sack, so this is hilarious. It's the Yuletide season. My favorite. Uh, it's December. Yes. In uh, Lansing, Illinois. I was working at a Walgreens there. I That's was right. an executive assistant manager. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A title which sounds fancier than it is, mm-hmm. and, and it don't sound that fancy. <laughs> So, uh, Brad also does not use the word don't ever. <laughs> I don't, I, I've, I've never used it before. So, uh, so there's a Salvation Army bell ringer outside our front door collecting. What, what is Salvation your, Army. what's your role there? Executive assistant manager. Okay. So, you're, you're assistant so, manager. so when, when the store manager isn't there, it's me mm-hmm. over the other assistants wow, over the rest them. of the store. Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> uh, I think it was a good crew at this time. Get to work. That's my Brad impression. It's a great Brad impression. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, the Salvation Army guy is out there. And uh, at the time, we had dealt with a lot of people coming in and, and using our our bathrooms. And yes. for some reason, we decided to put locks on them. And they're just simple combination locks. You know, mm-hmm. there's five buttons. And I, I think the, the combination for both was you press three and four at the same time, and then one, and that unlocks the door, and you go in. Uh, but obviously, customers don't know that. So mm-hmm. when they need to use the restroom in our Walgreens, we yeah. have to let them in. Okay. Fine. No problem. Yeah, that's easy. Happy yeah. to do it. Yeah. Uh, one of the seven service basics at Walgreens. Right, it's right, not right. really, but That's okay. uh, so so basically, uh, this guy comes in. It's cold outside. He's been ringing the bell all day. He's tired. He says, "Hey, can I use your bathroom?" <laughs> and me, being a fun-loving guy that I am, <laughs> jokingly responds, "Yeah, why do you need to use our bathroom? You've got a bucket out there." And I like chuckle to myself. <laughs> Chuckled to myself. Chuckled to myself far more than that uh, that quip deserves. But still, did he I'm, laugh? I, he did not laugh. <laughs> what are you looking at when you see his cold, dead eyes when he responds? Well, to I'm kind of turned away because I'm walking back toward the bathroom. I just don't hear him yeah, laugh. Right. So uh, you know, we walk through the hallmark aisle, through the baby stuff. I mm-hmm, let him in the bathroom, mm-hmm, whatever, mm-hmm. and uh, and forget about it. Right. You know, it's an hour and a half before the end of my shift. Whatever. Okay. Work ends. I'm pulling out of the parking lot. <laughs> And I look to my left, and he's giving me the finger. <laughs> Salvation Army Santa Claus. And I turn and look, and he mouths the word asshole at me. <laughs> I just, like, it's funny, because, like, regardless of where this story goes, the fact that they hired someone that would do this as they're asking for charity and dress like Santa Claus is so fucking funny. I like, I like the idea that you're like, Salvation Army hires people to do this. It's not a volunteer thing. They're paying this guy eight bucks an hour. Are they? Yeah, is it volunteer? volunteers. Is it volunteer? Yeah. Oh, all right. Honestly, the way this guy acted, I wouldn't be surprised if it was community service. <laughs> Rage-fueled crimes. <laughs> strong, strong words from Brad. <laughs> yes. So, uh, so I, I'm, I'm flabbergasted at this behavior, and I drive down the road, and I, I did not make it home. I'm like, I, I pulled over in a gas station. I took out my 2003 Nokia cell phone, yep. and I called my boss, and I'm like, <laughs> Santa... <laughs> Just gave me the I, finger. I wish you called your mom. <laughs> I <laughs> called my boss. Closet. I called my boss first because, you know, he was still there. And I'm like, I don't like this guy. <laughs> I love the idea. Like, this guy, this guy dressed as Santa Claus, gave you the finger and called you an asshole. And guess what? I don't like him. <laughs> like, like, you need to clarify I, that. Oh so I call, I call my boss, Dennis. I say, Dennis. <laughs> Uh, you need to go talk with that Salvation Army guy. I don't want him there. I don't want him in front of our store. <laughs> and he says, why? And I, uh, he said, why? And I explained. He yeah, gave me the yeah, finger. Yeah. And he's like, okay, I'll go talk to him. So he goes outside, talks to him. And I, you know, I, I'm steamed about it all evening. <laughs> I go in the next She's steamed. I go in the next day and I say, hey, what happened with that Salvation Army guy? And he says, what did you, like, what did you do to him? And I'm like, I didn't do anything to him. <laughs> He him. asked if he could use our bathroom. I love, what did you do to him? <laughs> As the, I, I, I said, I let him in to use the bathroom. That's my crime. And he's like, he said he asked if you could use the bathroom. 
I'm like, that's true. He's like, and you told him. I'm like, uh-huh, keep going. You told him he could shit in his bucket. And I was like, what? I'm like, why would I say that? He's like, I don't know. You think you're funny. I'm like, I do think I'm funny, but I'm not that kind of funny. I'm like, I would never say that to another human being. Go shit in your bucket. <laughs> He's like, well, I didn't think you said it. I'm like, then why did you ask me? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm like, oh, I told him it like jokingly. I chuckled oh, to myself, so blah, funny. blah, blah. Oh, that's and, uh, and my boss thought it was the funniest. Oh, and I'm like, so funny. like, I don't, I don't. I don't want this guy in front of the story. He's like, no, he's, he says he's fine with it. He, uh, I apologize on your behalf. I'm like, I have nothing to apologize <laughs> to. My yeah. arms are flapping over my head like, like Kermit the Frog. <laughs> I apologize on your behalf. <laughs> I, and, you know, to him, it's not a big deal. Yeah, to, right, to him, yeah. it's, it's a joke. It's a funny thing that happened. Yes. To me, I'm like, I have a blood feud against the Salvation <laughs> Army. And I refused to donate to them. I refused. To like to this them. day? No, I for probably eight years oh until my. until I moved into this apartment. <laughs> the guy calls a random man, flicks you off and calls you an asshole. So it stops you from donating to a charity for eight years. To one specific charity, <laughs> donated to other charities. How about this though? Do you ever take into account like this poor guy, even though you might remember the events a little bit skewed? A little bit skewed. <laughs> Don't you think that like, what if someone told you to go shit in a bucket? Wouldn't you feel the same way? Yeah. If, if someone had actually <laughs> said that to me. Well, that's what he thought you said. But I didn't say it. That's not how he took it. I, I can see, you know, people can't see you right now. Your eyes are kind of beady. <laughs> they sure are. <laughs> so when you get yeah. beadier by the second. When you say like, you know, oh, you have a bucket. Like I could, I could see someone taking it as like. Stone Cold Serious. Oh, I don't know. There's a <laughs> chuckle there. And we were in motion. There was a chuckle there. To the, we're in motion to the bathroom. It's not like I stopped him and then like he had to pay a toll of any kind. Like we were we were going where he wanted to go. Oh my God. What I say is immaterial at that point. <laughs> I don't know. This guy. <laughs> Are you on the bell ringer's a, side? I think it was a misunderstanding. The bell yeah, ringer. Yeah, it's a misunderstanding because he's an idiot. <laughs> so what do you? So when you, uh, you know, if 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 Stephen Hawking is ex is explaining the theory of the universe to me, and I'm like, duh, yeah. then I'm yeah, I'm misunderstanding Stephen Hawking. Yeah, I guess because I'm true. incapable yeah. of accepting what's presented. Wow. So do you? I mean, I, when I, you said this, this guy. Stone face? Do you think he understood it was a joke? Because according to you, he didn't seem to. He, I, I guess, I guess he did not. But I, I'm like, <laughs> I didn't say the word shit in any in any kind. <laughs> Go I said, your why bucket. not? Are you all right? Basically, why do you need to use your bathroom? You've got a bucket. He turns it to go shit in your bucket. Wow. Yeah. I will say though. In his defense. Stop defending him! <laughs> you, you have been misunderstood a couple times in your life. I have. I have. <laughs> Is that true? Isn't that I, true? I have, yeah, you think it's so funny when it happens. I'm trying to think of a good example. Why? Well, there's one that we can't tell on the podcast. <laughs> um, but there, it, it's, it's, uh, you call it stepping on a landmine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it's when I commit a verbal gaffe yeah. that I have no way of knowing yeah, you would have. be a gaffe oh, going into oh, it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's been a couple of oh, those. Oh, you know what? There was one time... Where I was looking at porn and like one of those websites that like has like, oh, just, you know, this is fun, like local porn. You know, <laughs> do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> anyway, looking at this local porn and I saw this girl that I knew. Remember? Yeah, I do. This was the story I didn't want to tell on the podcast. <laughs> There's this girl I know. And so it was a picture of her from the side on a toilet and it was clearly like someone busted in and took a picture of her peeing from the side completely g-rated no nudity right right not not even salacious in the least really and she's laughing it's almost like you know if you did it to your to your buddy in high school there's a picture in, of you on the toilet yeah exactly that you had framed on your wall for years yeah it's just like that it was it was definitely a silly innocent picture yes. right it wasn't sexual yes but it was on this website i told brad about it that girl on, on an episode of the podcast on the podcast yeah. that girl for some reason contacted me later and just said, hey, I know you have a podcast completely unrelated to that. And said, can I come sit in on a recording? Remember that? Yeah. And then she came in and she walked in and Brad's like, nope. <laughs> hey, no, I saw you no, shitting no. in a bucket. <laughs> That's, that is not what happened. What happened? 
uh, we yeah. were bowling and she was there <laughs> oh, yeah. with a friend of ours. Oh, yeah. And I was like, hey, I've seen a picture of you peeing. <laughs> Thinking it was like, you know, fair game to joke about. Not the case. She flipped. She, 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 <laughs> was, she was not happy with me. You know what her dad does for a living? He's a Salvation Army Santa Claus. <laughs> I will say she, she later came to a recording of the podcast. Yes. And it, it, she's like, yeah, water sorry Water under about the that. bridge. Sorry about that. Yeah, water peed under the bridge. Yeah, you just have a funny way about you. Like, I, for some reason, I feel like I say things to people that are so much more offensive. Oh, yeah. All the time. Yes. And I never get in trouble for it. You often get in trouble for it. <laughs> Do I? Yes. <laughs> Who gets me in trouble? Yeah. I don't know about anything offensive. I, I hear see. about it. <laughs> anyway, and I feel like you never say anything offensive, and you get in trouble more than I do. That's correct, yes. Oh, it's hilarious. Yeah. Um, is anyway. it, though? <laughs> or is it just sad? <laughs> anyway, I wanted you to tell that podcast that story on the podcast, because I feel like some of the listeners of Tell Them Steve Dave might enjoy it. Um, if you do want to hear more of our podcast... How are they going to enjoy my pain? <laughs> that's what I enjoy. Oh. If you want to hear more of our podcast, uh, something you, you guys might like, um, we did a live panel at Rhode Island Comic Con where we interviewed the guys who played Kevin and Stanley from The Office, yep. and we released that as an episode. That's episode 441 of our podcast. And I thought it'd be fun to point that out just because on the Tell Em Steve Dave Patreon this week... We just released a new episode of Frank Fives Rewind, where we covered The Office. So if yes. you want to check that out, it's 441 at chuckandbradpodcast.com. And also, if you're a big fan of the Tell Em Steve Dave Christmas, the games episodes, we do games once in a while, once in a great while, not, yes. not often at all. They're not the same as the Tell Em Steve Dave games. They're, They're a little not. bit more like written ahead of time, yeah. where we give people challenges to write things and come in with funny stuff. Um, but if you do like the idea of podcast games and friends kind of playing these games and how funny it can get, um, episode 283 of our podcast was our Christmas games episode. Ugh. That's one of my favorite g- episodes we it's ever did. amazing. Yeah. So yeah, check out more podcasts, hopefully at chuckandbradpodcast.com. And if you don't, that's okay. I understand. We had a lot of shit going on. Every, everyone has a lot of stuff to do. I don't, I don't expect you, know you to it, add us into your rotation. You know what? If, if you don't want to check it out, first get a bucket. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> no, if you don't, if you don't want to check it out, you just were like, I'm just here for the Tell Him Steve Dave miniseries. Feel free. I understand. It, everyone has a lot of responsibilities and not too much time. And but if you want to stick around for the Chuck and Brad podcast, please do. I appreciate that. Folks out there, if you have questions, comments, concerns, or otherwise, send us an email, chuckandbrad at gmail.com or find the email link through chuckandbradpodcast.com. That's right. And next week, uh, you know, part two of our Tesdy Town history miniseries. Or the history of Tesdy Town miniseries. Still yeah, whatever not we sure. decide Still to call it. Sure. Um, That's all I've got. That's all I got. Deuces.